Good evening and welcome to the September 5th select board meeting and I'm calling meeting order at 6.32 p.m. Uh, we'll start with opening remarks, announcements, and agenda review. Um, just a couple of quick things in our agenda. We'll, <clears throat> we may hop around a little bit. Um, I think some folks are here for the uh, for road closure relative to the Amherst Half Marathon, so I'll probably take them first just to take care of that. Is there anyone here for public comment other than something related to an agenda item? And if not, are there any announcements or things that my colleagues want to mention or things about the agenda that they want to mention before we get into it? If not, then... If you'd be so kind to join us up here, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your request for the uh, half marathon. Give yourself an opportunity to kind of promote the event. Sure. I, uh, is this on? <laughs> it is. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, so uh, I'm here tonight for the uh, Amherst Half Marathon, the second running uh, of that could, road race. Last year could was you the mention inaugural. Your name, please? Oh, oh, Josh Miller. Thank you very much. I'm with the Hartford Marathon Foundation, and we're here for. Uh, request for road closures for the second running of the half marathon race. Uh, last year, we had a very successful uh, first year event with uh, just about 800 participants. Uh, the event benefits the Amherst Survival Center. Last year, we raised about $3,500 for the Survival Center, uh, which was a great success. And this year, we're looking uh, for approval for the November 4th event. Do my colleagues have any questions for the gentleman from the half marathon? Any changes to the route or anything like that? that no you... changes to the route. Um, there is two additional road closures re being requested from last year uh, at request and with conversations with uh, Captain Gunderson of the police department uh, to assist with uh, motorists and, and runners uh, impacting each other. So uh, two detours uh, being requested. Uh, one on Pine Street uh, between East Pleasant Street and Henry Street, and one on uh, North Pleasant Street uh, between Eastman Lane and Massachusetts Avenue. So uh, I think we're, we were very pleased last year with the contribution to the Amherst Survival Center. Um, and there was some discussion last year, and maybe we'll revisit it right now, um, about the amount of um, funds raised compared to some other events of a similar nature. And so I'm remembering part of the conversation was, well, let's let them get some traction, get their event up and known, and we expect that contribution to increase and go up. So I wanted to hear a little bit more about how that um, contribution might go up. Sure, we, we want it to go up too. <laughs> uh, so just recently, a few weeks ago, uh, we had a great meeting at the Survival Center with, with Mindy and her team. Uh, brainstorming ways we can do that. Uh, so number one, uh, the, the biggest thing that we're doing uh, is creating a team survival. Uh, so essentially what that is is people that participate can elect to be a part of this team, pay a little bit more in their entry fees, which will allow for, for more funds to go directly to them. A big thing too, and I think we discussed uh, briefly at the end of last year or beginning to this year, uh, Participation in general is is huge for for us to grow that to grow that donation amount. Um, we hope and we're on track for that for participation to increase. So with increased participation, bigger funds can be raised directly for the for the survival center. Other questions? Yes, Ms. Brewer. I wonder if we just might have the minutes reference both the amount of the donation from last year, which I believe was characterized as 35,000, and also the 100. 100. The, yes, nice. thank you. That would have been nice, Big wouldn't dish. it have? I don't know why I wrote that there. It would, would have ended up in the minutes and really looked like something, huh? $3,500. And the fact that there were additional road closures based on the recommendation of the police, right. just so that it doesn't seem like it's exactly the same as last year, just shows that it's evolved. I wouldn't want to change the motion, but just that the minutes reflect that. And right. we learn as things go along. All right. If there are not other questions, then we might entertain a motion relative to the half marathon. If someone is on the back of our motion sheet. Someone so inclined? E, I believe. And I could do that as long as I was reminded of the name that you provided me at the beginning because it doesn't show who the contact person
person is. And usually we try and include a contact person in the name, motion. Yep. Uh, my name is Josh Miller. Thank you, Josh. Do you, would you characterize yourself as manager, event coordinator, <laughs> president, czar? I am the uh, race director for the race for the director. event. Uh, yep, from the Hartford Marathon Foundation is our organization's name. Thank you very much. So I move to approve the proposal, the proposal by the. I'm open to suggestion here. Uh, the Hartford Marathon Foundation. Yeah, I think so. Hartford Marathon Foundation. Rather than Amherst Half Marathon Committee. To partially close roads on November 4th, 2018 from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. This includes the southbound lane on North Pleasant Street, East Pleasant Street, North Pleasant, and South Pleasant from Massachusetts Avenue to Snell Street. This final closure no, I have no idea what that means. Um, we'll be, yeah, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> so I think it's the South Pleasant from Mass Ave to Snell Street, I think is what they're referring to with that final closure. Okay, so let's go back and say from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. for the southwest lane on North Pleasant Street, East Pleasant Street, and North Pleasant Street, and then end it, and then say... Um, South Pleasant Street from Massachusetts Avenue to Snell Street for f for approximately 40 minutes, 8 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. Josh Miller, race director. Second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so that's unanimous with one absent. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. I think we've had some other folks in our licenses public way sort of section come in. Did the did the folks that are coming in relative to the parking days installation come? So why don't you come forward to the mic and, and tell us about your event and and your request for <coughs> metered parking spaces, if you would, please. Grab another yeah, please arrange the furniture accordingly. Just announce who you are and where you're from, and then tell us about the event and. Uh, my name is Tim Tenson. Um, I, we are from the Western Massachusetts Boston Society of Landscape Architects. Um, I operate a landscape design firm out of Amherst. And I practice with Berkshire Design in Northampton. I'm, oh, and I'm Rachel Leffler. Uh, so Parking Day is an annual event that was started uh, a number of years ago in San Francisco, and it's held around the world uh, on September 21st. Um, typically, uh, Mark Lindholt, uh, performer, or is current? For, former president. Uh, former president uh, held a parking day event in the Bertucci's parking lot. Um, and this year, uh, we're going to be trying to expand the, uh, the program a little bit to incorporate more of the universities in the area, including the Conway School, um, Smith School of Landscape Studies, and UMass Landscape Architecture and Regional Planning Program. As well as area professionals. Um, to come together, uh, actually tomorrow night, for a design charrette to design um, an installation for uh, the parking day installation. Um, and the three parking spaces that we were interested in this year are um, adjacent to the new development um, across from, what is that called, uh, 1 Kendrick Park. Um, so near Kendrick Park and Hair by Harlow. Um, and it's kind of amazing how 200 square feet of space can be totally transformed um, for one day with plantings and seating. Um, it becomes a huge community event. People stopping by will come and ask what you're doing, um, and, it's, and it's a great a great way to kind of engage with the public and, and on the street. Are there questions for them from my colleagues? Yes, Ms. Brewer. My question actually is for the town manager, and it's associated with this is not a new concept to us. It's a new organization that's come to us to do this, but it's been done before, and I just wondered if he could remind us of feedback or any... Um, certainly positive things, but any things that we need to be aware of from the last time this was done when I believe it was done through the Business Improvement mm -hmm. District. Yeah, I, th I don't think there was any negative feedback from through when the Business Improvement District did it. I think it was a, what I recall it was a really hot day when they did it, <laughs> and there wasn't a lot of participation, and they sort of did it in a bare bones. And I think what the proposal is to do 
involve a lot more people and um, and it was just to generate some more excitement uh, in the downtown area when the business improvement district I believe they did it in the summer last year so and you have talked with the business improvement district I yes as we well. have yeah that before bringing it to the town we spoke with them a little bit about their experience mm -hmm. and, and we should mention that um, the organization is considering two sites in parallel one in Northampton and one in Amherst so depending how many people show up tomorrow night and willing to take on the logistics of setting up and taking down and staffing the site we may have to choose Northampton or Amherst so It's a great idea because I've read about it in lots of other cities, so I'm excited you're doing it here, and I think it's a really good way to bring attention to urban space and make people rethink the things they take for granted. So thanks for doing this. Thanks. I'll just throw my two cents in. Um, <coughs> as a planner, I, th I think it's really you know, a, a great idea. I've seen it done other places and part of you know placemaking and public space. So um, as we get more familiar with this and have this more often, I think that's um, really helpful. And I like that... This location is kind of between the core of the downtown and the university because there's a lot of uh, just spontaneous, you know, foot traffic of people coming in and going out. So um, there's some other places where it might be interesting, but I think people are going to see it in, um, it's, it's a very visible location. So uh, um, I think the design process, um, I hope it goes well for you and I look forward to seeing the installation and hopefully I'll remember <laughs> that it's happening that day. So maybe if, you know, we may be able to, um, use the town, um, different social media things to help get the word out. So people kind of know what it is and get a little buzz going for it. So sounds like a good creative enterprise. Thank you. Are there further questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Brewer. When I make the motion, if you, are so moved as to allow that, um, I should list Tim Tenson as the contact person. Would that be accurate? Great. And again, your title, please. Um, You're part of the planning committee. Yeah, planning committee. For Western Member. Mass BSLA. Yeah. I know you're also going to ask because in the motion it has W M B S L A, which we're going to pull. Is, you wrote it out already. It's Great. It's Western Massachusetts Boston Society of Landscape Architects. We have a major branding issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's a legacy name, 20 years in the running. <laughs> you need to come up we with come. a name that has like has nothing to do with any of those words. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if there are not other comments, I'd certainly entertain a motion on that. If you would be so kind. So I move to approve the Park Ing Day proposal by the Western Massachusetts Boston Society of Landscape Architects, also known as Perens WMBSLA, to use three metered parking spaces located at 220 North Pleasant Street on September 21st, 2018. Contact Tim Tenson uh, Planning Committee. Second. Motion in a second. Is there further discussion? Yes. Should we make it clear that we are we are or we are not charging for bagging that day, since those are are those are normally spaces that are metered. Mm -hmm. right. um, so are we charging? Typically, we would charge for, and it's ten dollars per space. And we usually put that in the motion. Yeah, we, we would are. put that in the motion so they would know. <laughs> oh. So we would all know. Right. Have so we ever given? A, do people ever ask for? Well, a with the bid, we did not charge. Oh, because we're also a member of the bid, so. Right. right. <laughs> so, if, yes, if I please. might, my theory would be that we would not necessarily need to charge, given that this is not an event that's for the purpose of, say, putting a dumpster out so that a business can deconstruct an office and reconstruct an office. Although we've also had other events like the Eric Carl Museum's vehicle that we have charged the bank for. So I think we could go either way, but I would like however we decide to be, to be added on to the motion so that it's in our records as to what we did. You want to suggest yes. which way that you go? <laughs> I would, I, well, I, I would suggest we, we don't charge. I do think we have a precedent with the bid. Yeah, we're a member, but that actually doesn't make the, I don't think that's the distinguishing characteristic. And this is a nonprofit with a, with a, um, gen, a uh, public benefit for, for the community. But I think it would be good if the motions in the future um, 
indicated if the if there was a charge or not or people come in they should ask if they want the parking fee waived mm -hmm. or if they don't ask for it to be waived then might assume that it is being charged and would be in here but i would be curious um, where do you get your money what kind of budget do you have um, we currently have 47 members in Western Massachusetts that goes all the way to Pittsfield um, and so we have annual dues from that and um, we could cover the charge of, of the parking. Oh, well, so not with, not with the intention of offending my friends in the banking industry, but I figure they have ways of accounting for that that's a whole lot easier for them than it is for a small organization that is clearly doing this as a public benefit as opposed to something they're going to make a profit off of or even in terms of driving business to their storefront that they don't have. So right. <laughs> um, I would tend to suggest that we do not at no charge. I would include the words at whatever Mr. Bachman thinks are the right words to make it clear that it's at no charge. Is that fine with the seconder? I presume it's a further motion. So we'll have the at no charge added to that motion as well. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So that's unanimous with one member absent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you have a great event. Thank you. So, I think we'll do one more in there because I think we have one more person that's here for one of those licenses publicly in Meter Park. We have a common victual license for uh, a new cafe at the Science Center at Amherst College. So if you want to come forward and tell us a little bit about that and just a little bit of an unusual circumstance because it's on campus and that sort of thing. So just kind of paint the picture for us a little bit and, and uh, just a little um, sense of it, if you would. Sure. Uh, my name is Joe Flukiger. I'm the Director of Dining Services at Amherst College. And I do have a packet for each of you. Um, if I could. You just hand them all to her and she'll, we'll pass them around. You'll, you'll fill in for Mr. Steinberg. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Would you give me one? To uh, it's, <clears throat> I won't walk you through all the details, but... Um, Essentially, this is a uh, very small cafe uh, with retail, I mean, it's essentially, essentially retail space, not even, I don't think it's quite a thousand square feet, um, which, where we'll serve coffee, beverages, smoothies, uh, some light snacks, uh, some meals. Uh, initially, our intention is to open uh, from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and as the use of the space expands, uh, we hope to be able to expand the hours at the cafe. Um, the, uh, in the proof of concept, which is part of the packet here, uh, the idea of the cafe is really in a, in a way to create a public use space for students on campus. Um, currently, our Keefe Campus Center is uh, fairly small. Uh, the concourse in the New Science Center is rather large and will accommodate uh, some, some significant seating capacity. Uh, the cafe wouldn't necessarily be used to feed or uh, all the people that are in that space, but um, it just creates a, a more active and uh, nicer space for the students' campus life. So was this space as a cafe, was that part of the design when you were putting the building together, you were thinking of a, of a space like this in there, or, or is this something that sort of come to plan after the fact? I'm just curious. Not yeah, that's a question I could not answer. Uh, I've been with Amherst College for 14 months, and this uh, project's been in process for years. And so I don't know the answer to that question. I do know that since I've been part of the process, it's been included and it's been articulated uh, in the plans that have gone through uh, the planning board and uh, with the town inspector, building inspector. Okay, great. Mr. Wall, please. Just reading quickly as are all of you, but I've seen this latter part of the document about the proof of concept that's dated 11-6-2015 and does mention the cafe on the final printed page. It mentions cafe support, for example, in that part of the document. So okay. it goes back at least several years, if okay, I'm reading correctly. Great. Other questions, concerns? Yes, Ms. Burrell. 
So as usual, our common vitular license is an extreme, exceedingly small portion of this, despite all the paper and signatures involved in doing so. And it's really inspections and health that are looking at this to ensure that all the food is being served <coughs> safely, et cetera. So um, I guess I don't feel compelled to grill, <laughs> so to speak, the cafe <laughs> owner any further on. It's not going to serve alcohol and it the all the sanitary measures will be covered by another body that is an expert in that area so yes Ms. So i have a question it's not related to whether you know i approving but just on my own curiosity so i read in the packet the students said we don't want we don't want more lunch you know something like lunch we want something to eat for late night studying and i'm like well, what are those foods yeah um so our intention with that space is to align the menu with uh, the lead certification of this building, which is very you know high you know high level lead certification. So organic broccoli chips. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> organic. Yeah, kale chips. Um, no, actually, yeah. So there will be some snack items, but it, a lot of it will be uh, healthier um, snack foods, not uh, fries and that kind of thing. Those, you can, they can go to another location to get those things. Uh, no, well, I, I, so we have some grain bowls um, with uh, like veggie toppings. Uh, we will have tartines, which are just like small tarts, uh, flatbread pizza with uh, vegetables, uh, open face sandwiches, low carb, uh, smoothies, those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Another sort of just curiosity question, not really related, but uh, can the general public come, or is it limited to Amherst College students only? It is only? open to general public, and uh, we we are hoping to be able to accept credit cards, which we do do not accept credit cards anywhere on campus as of the moment. So yeah, anybody can come, and we expect um, people to come from actually pretty far away, invited guests and other members of the public uh, to enjoy the space. It's a beautiful building. Yes. So just confirm uh, your hours of operation would be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's, that's, that's correct. So in the beginning, uh, the building is actually only open during class, the class schedule as the building is, you know, there are some things that are still being done, like in the, in the latter part of the day. Uh, so over time, we do expect the building to have use in the evenings and late at night, and we hope to be able to open uh, the cafe later as the use of the building changes. Then you would amend your request. Of course. Come back for that. Okay. Yes. Um, and when do you think you'll be open? We're hoping, uh, provided it, it's approved, we're hoping September 17th. Other questions? Comments. <laughs> if not, I'll take a motion. But you look like you have a question oh, forming in I your head, so I'm gonna. <laughs> I was gonna ask about the hours, but it is true that since the police have already signed off on this, um, as eight to five, I suppose it, it's not that painful to have to come back to us and ask to amend the hours. So, and it sounds like it's a good starting point. I would ask, however, if you are making the motion that you would include the words open to the public. Because? Because many things on campuses are not. I don't think that's relevant to the okay. motion. I, I mean, I, I don't. I'd it's like fine. our minutes to reflect it okay. then if it's not in the motion. I, I don't think it's related to getting a common VIC license. Uh, I move to approve a new common victualler license for a new cafe, for a cafe. Wait. I move to approve a common victualler license for a cafe located in the Science Center at Amherst College operating Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Premises located at 25 East Drive, Joseph T. Flickiger, Manager. Second. Let's have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that's unanimous with one member absent. Thank you very Could much. Could I ask a clarifying question? 
Sure. Uh, so uh, if we were to amend the hours, would we fill a, a new application and submit that and then appear again here? Yes? Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. Probably would have let you do that now, but <laughs> it was already signed off. All right. So next up, we'll head to action and discussion items, and we have a couple of things relative to Chapter 61A, so I believe Mr. Zomek is here to guide us through that with the help of some other folks, and so if all those would... Thank you very well, much. They approach the bench. It's not quite like that. It's, <laughs> it's not a trial. But uh, please introduce yourselves at the mic and who you're with, and uh, tell us a little bit about these two 61A pro uh, Thank you. parcels, please. Thank you very much. Dave Zomek, Assistant Town Manager. I'm joined by David Burson, uh, attorney for, uh, with Bacon and Wilson, and he uh, represents the Coles Company in these two items, both the Chapter 61 uh, considerations this evening. And I think I will quickly turn it over um, to him, uh, you may recall that we took these two items up a few meetings ago and some confusion arose. And in large part, um, I wanna say that this is a, we're breaking some new ground. We, we have not done, uh, in my experience with the town, uh, chapter 61 um, releases relative to leases, leasing of land. So recall, and from your packet, you, will, you certainly read that, um, Coles is proposing to lease parts of property in North Amherst, north of Pulpit Hill Road, uh, to a company to produce solar uh, or to build and then uh, uh, produce uh, energy on this property, uh, with some of the land being taken out of chapter and some of the land remaining in chapter. So we, we collectively um, got a little stuck on what land was coming, staying in and what land was coming out. So I hope uh, that Attorney Burson can walk us through that today and your questions can be directed to him. Thank you. Good evening and thank you for having me. Um, just kind of to start as a baseline, um, because I know when I spoke with, uh, with Dave Burgess as well as town council, there was some question relative to why we had filed two notices. So I thought I'd just really briefly kind of get into that. Um, so when there's six parcels um, that are all involved here, um, and all six of those partial parcels um, going back some in some instances over 20 almost 30 years um, there have been a number of liens uh, chapter 61 liens filed on uh, various parcels um, and some of those were for chapter 61 and some of those were for under chapter 61a so um, going through all of those liens I did my best to uh, to cut down the ones that had been released over the years um, and the way it kind of panned out some of the parcels were classified under both Chapter 61 and Chapter 61A. Um, and part of the process that, that Dave and I are, are kind of going through right now and what we're gonna be going through in the future with, um, with Dave Burgess, the three Daves, um, will be to figure out um, what's been taxed as what and, and how the rollback taxes are gonna be calculated and, and how the, the appropriate tax rate is gonna change relative to these parcels. So um, collectively, um, 33.8 acres um, is proposed to be removed from chapter land um, and then the uh, the remaining acreage um, of all of those parcels would remain um, and that's inclusive of, of both the area that's going to be uh, leased by the solar company as well as all the areas where um, easements uh, may exist so for instance access easements or utility easements um, but to that to that end what um, yeah so to that end um, if I may approach, because uh, that drawing that you see um, above is one that, uh, that Dave and I had, uh, had kind of drawn on, and I, I think that this may be a little bit clearer as, as to what's actually coming out. Um, what's up on the display right now, there was some color coding so we can show each parcel um, and then the area that was being removed, um, and it just, I think with all the colors, it, it's got a little bit confusing. So this is the bare bones. Um, this is exactly what is coming out. So I apologize, um, I don't have a better mechanism mm -hmm. for this. What's coming out is what you've striped. What is striped and highlighted, correct. Do you want the, the blacked out now? Um, and, and there is another one. Um, so. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Dueling uh, remotes here. Looking for an easel. So. Um, there was this other plan um, that we had originally prepared. Um, we you, did I, not. I didn't get to. See oh, I'm sorry. 
I can't see over there. <laughs> yeah, I'll just look at it. Uh, so there is. So, oh, gosh. Be able to set it on the easel there. The then we can get it on TV. That's right. So this was the initial plan that the um, that the solar company had sent to us. Uh, I did not submit this plan, even though it does seem a lot clearer. Primarily because um, there is an area. Is this a pointer? Um, there is an area here that was included in the blacked out area that is actually not coming out. So I, I for purposes of being accurate, um, I felt it would not be appropriate to file this document, although it did make things a little bit clearer uh, when going over it with Dave Zomek. So um, the plan that you have here as well as the, uh, this map that we, sh we showed you initially actually does have the accurate areas that are, that are coming out of chapter land. Um, and as I mentioned, um, the we, we're certainly going to have to sit down with Dave Burgess to figure out exactly what the rollback taxes are going to be here and, and how to calculate it appropriately because I think part of the issue is that some of these older liens and why some of this land is probably under both is because certain areas of it are probably under one and, and certain areas are under another tax classification. Um, and I think that we're going to have to sit down with Dave and really figure out the appropriate way to, to kind of separate this. Um, as far as where um, how the process goes. So we're requesting um, the ability to remove this this area from chapter land um, and the um, as it is a conversion as opposed to a sale there's there's a separate process involved if the town did have an, an interest in, in exercising their option. Mr. Zomek. I did just want to remind the board that both the planning board and the conservation commission um, considered this and I believe there in your previous packet a couple of weeks ago and, and you may have gotten it again in this packet um, both the planning board and the CONCOM recommended to you that the town not exercise its right of first refusal um, again because this is a lease situation uh, this is a first in my tenure with the town and we're learning as we go um, one of the things we, we discussed with Sharon Everett from Copeman and Page Town Council was if in the future the town wanted to exercise its right of first refusal uh, uh, triggered by a lease, uh, it's a much quicker process and turnaround time. It, uh, you can't step into a purchase and sale agreement because there isn't one. Uh, yet uh, this, the law mandates uh, a very quick turnaround into a purchase and sale agreement, an immediate appraisal, and then a very swift process to closing. So we're learning as we go. We will likely get more of these as, as solar is proposed in different parts of town. So um, this is where we are in this project. Ms. Kruger. Um, well, I wonder when it, I mean, I understand that. Thank you for the review. When the Planning Board of the Conservation Commission looked at that, if there's any kind of map that gave them some context because we don't have an aerial view of the area. I can see Pulpit Hill Road down there, and I can see Montague Road, and I can kind of figure this out. But, and I'm not opposed to this, but, you know, to take this without any view of anything, I happen to know the town well enough to kind of imagine some of the outlying, effect. I have nothing to look at that places this within any context of what's around it. And maybe it's our submission requests for what we ask for, for um, you know, a withdrawal request, maybe the state only wants this, but I find it really frustrating when we get these to just see a, a, you know, a box with things drawn on it. And it's not a comment on whether this is, we wanna exercise our right of first refusal or not, which I know is our limited scope for tonight, but I find it frustrating that there's no context map at all or aerial view. I, I, can, I can certainly understand that frustration. I think, um, I mean, obviously there's the, you know, we follow the, the state guidelines and what they ask for is the, a map, not necessarily something showing topography, obviously, but. Apparently I, so, because this is all we ever get. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I'm curious, and I, this is also probably not relevant, but I'm, I'm curious to what extent, and this is probably something really better discussed with town council, to the extent that the town actually could um, create additional um, you know, I I, I, right. Would if, I, but it's I an interesting. It's I an interesting could. question. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, just, I mean, my colleague across the way was shaking. Said it's just a little unsatisfying to not know what you know, not see. And you know, we're about to enter a phase. Where we're going to have a new group of people making these decisions and with different skill sets around knowing the town or envisioning what we're looking at. Uh, my colleague across the way, where you, you were shaking your head. Bob, <laughs> would you want to? 
You were shaking your head on this. Do you want to? Oh, in agreement. Help me out here. In, in yes. agreement. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's always helpful. I mean, and, and, and this is again what's required, and what's you know, and some of this is <clears throat> perhaps on me when we're setting agendas to sort of ask for some context, you know, so what lies nearby, you know, to sort of orient ourselves, because, you know, I've certainly been in that section of town plenty of times, but not familiar with the sort of particulars of that lot and, and you know, what lies near, what are the, you know, neighborhoods nearby, that sort of thing. And again, not a complaint of you and your efforts there, some of it's on us for A, not asking, and B, not, not uh, thinking about that, but anyway, Ms. Brewer. So I can't quite remember how many years ago it was that we talked about having checklists associated with this sort of item um, and it's just not been a thing we've done yet but part of that and you know you can't always capture context with with a checklist you can get through some of these things like we can make sure for example as I'm sure we will that our minutes reflect the August 3rd memos from the Conservation Commission and the dated concert the planning board votes to show that it happened in this order because it doesn't have to happen in this order, but it did happen in this order that we got, we had both of those. I also am not sure how to cover in a checklist, much as I would love to have one, that while I would expect staff to talk with the Conservation Commission about why this might matter to them, and the Planning Board about why it might matter to our community through a Planning Board lens, I would also expect that even if for some reason it didn't, disagree with the way Conservation Commission and Planning Board have been doing their work in light of our master plan, in light of all of our other plans and rules, that if something seemed odd about it, I would expect staff to tell us that <laughs> and say, so even though Conservation Commission was fine with it because they're looking at this, and Planning Board was fine with it because they're looking at this, I actually, for economic development reasons, I, staff member, am concerned about this. And I I'm working under the assumption that that review has already happened before it got to us rather than just, hey, select board, what do you think, <laughs> With, without that. And so I know we have an incredibly experienced staff who've been looking at aspects of all these things, even if not this paperwork trail, um, for, very, for many years. And so I would expect that we would hear about that. And so I guess I would just like confirmation that yes, so course that would have happened if there had been another kind of concern. Did Ms. Brestrup want to comment on that a little bit or or do you Mr. Zomek? So I apologize that we didn't I, I had thought a month ago when we covered this we did have a context map but perhaps my memory was incorrect. Um, I will say that I thought the, the, the focus of our conversation in that meeting was you wanted to see what was being taken out of cha chapter and what was remaining in. So I think that that's where we might have, I might have misunderstood. But that um, was part of it. Just to Ms. Brewer's comment, this has gone through, this solar project has gone through extensive town review, both by the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board, uh, inspection services, our electrical inspector. So this has been in process for months and in all honesty is under construction right now. So. Um, this is, uh, I'm, um, yeah, okay. it, it's I, been I, out there for a minute. Right, I just, if I could respond. Yes, I mean, every time we look at something and we're doing this in a public setting, it, it has to stand alone as well. And I do under, I understand we're sort of cleaning up something that we were part of that conversation, but it's just, you know, looking at it afresh and thinking about it, it might be helpful to have that in the future because somebody is picking this up and you know you might not be aware but I am that there was some public um, criticism of what we were about to do in one of the you know in some of the social media so I think it's it behooves us to be careful and explain what we're doing and why and at least um, and I apologize for for cutting you off Ms. Brestrup um, but I mean certainly as far as um, what the the map that you originally got I, I can certainly agree that it was confusing. Um, I was told that I had to put all of the individual parcel amounts that were coming out of each, and I think it just ended up cluttering the whole it's thing. We don't, yeah, it's fine. So. It's fine. It's just making that point to be helpful for future review. Chris Brestrup, um, Planning Director. Um, 
I can't remember the exact circumstances of this particular application, but I do know that in general, um, when we bring something to the planning board, we do show them a context plan, and we try to explain what uses and um, ownership is around the piece of land that's being asked to be taken out. And we do consider such things as whether they're contiguous to other land that's owned by the town or is in a conservation restriction or some such thing as that. And I suspect we did that in this case. I just don't remember exactly the plan that we showed them. Other questions or comments? If not, I would entertain a motion relative to this. If again, I think we're part of this is sort of we're thinking about our process around these things because it's. I mean, part of the time I think town staff has spent has been because it's a lease circumstance, not a sale, changes the game a little bit. That's been a particular. You know, the legal precedent and process is not as well defined or not as well articulated, so it's taken more time of staff to sort of navigate that. And so, you know, that's why we're sort of discussing this. I don't think as far as, I don't, I don't know that there's necessarily any opposition to, to sort of giving up our right to, to purchase. I don't think we have a need for it, given the, you know, planning conservation and no other issues been, have been raised to our, our understandings. But I think it's partly just our opportunity to sort of think about this, frame it, provide context to our, our staff so that, so that when the council takes over and they get one of these, they've got, you know, some things to ask for along the way. Did you have to? My only final co uh, comment would be that certainly staff and committees, planning board and CONCOM did wrestle a little bit, grapple a little bit with um, the whole notion of it, it, would the town want to step into a, a purchase situation to remove the owner's ability to um, create uh, solar uh, solar field and, and produce green energy. It's it's not something that uh, towns and municipalities are really used to doing. And since we did not, as far as I know, uh, I'm not aware of any social media <coughs> negative <laughs> around it, but we did not, uh, to my knowledge, receive any negative feedback on this going in north of Pulpit Hill Road. Had we, I think there would have been more discussion, certainly around the Conservation Commission uh, um, um, uh, meeting, but there really wasn't any, so. So would someone like to offer a motion relative to this? Anyone? So there's actually two. There are two, but. <laughs> now that we think it has all the parts of it that we were asking. I, I presume council has spent a fair amount of time crafting these motions for us, I believe. Yes. After last time. Sure, <laughs> never did craft. We tripped over these. Okay. Please. I can try reading. I move that the select board not exercise the option to purchase granted to the town under Mass General Law Chapter 61A to purchase properties located off Montague Road and Pulpit Hill Road, which are all or portions of the parcels of land identified by the assessors as parcels 2D-1, 2B-5, 2A-18, contain 11.3 acres more or less in the aggregate, a portion of the premises described in deeds recorded with the Hampshire Registry of Deeds in Book 1213, page 346, and in Book 1753, page 165, and to be leased for a 20-year term by W.D. Coles, Inc. to Lodestar Energy, Inc., or its nominee for solar purposes, and to execute a notice of non-exercise to evidence said release. Is there a second? Second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, so that's unanimous with one absent. And if you would be so kind as to Sure. Keep on reading. <laughs> I move that the select board not exercise the option to purchase granted to the town under Mass General Law Chapter 61 to purchase properties located off Montague Road and Pulpit Hill Road, which are all or portions of the parcels of land identified by the assessors as parcels 2D-1, 2D-14, 2B-3, 2B-4, 
2B-5 and 2A-18 contain 33.8 acres, more or less, in the aggregate. A portion of the premises described in deeds recorded with the Hampshire Registry of Deeds in Book 1213, page 346, and in Book 1753, page 165, and to be leased for a 20-year term by W.D. Coles to Lodestar Energy, Inc., or its nominee for solar purposes, and to execute a notice of non-exercise to evidence said release. Is there a second? second? And there's a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed? And so that's unanimous with one absent. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. <coughs> Appreciate that. And so because it's 61 and 61A, that's why some parcels were mentioned twice, I believe, because they were right. double chapterized or whatever that would be. I don't know exactly what the term is, but thank you very much. So next on our agenda is the North Common Renovations, a bit of a fir first look, so relative to, yes. want to do this other property? Epstein? Oh, do we have another? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so while the deed acceptance of Epstein. Yeah, while we're maps, <laughs> while we're dealing with that. So if if you want to take us through that, we'll so we'll do deed acceptance for the Epstein property, approximately approximate or adjacent to 37 Bay Road, to be used by the Conservation Commission. If you would like to take us through that, please. Thank you. Thank you. So Sorry. we do have what I hope is a is a better map for you tonight on Epstein. I know that the board is very familiar with this. Um, property that is being funded uh, partially by a state grant, a land grant, and partially 30% by CPA funds. And we're nearing the finish line on this, and we just have really two steps left. Uh, we're bringing to you tonight the acceptance of the deed, uh, which is the town essentially saying, we, we are uh, willing and uh, able and uh, will fund the purchase of this property, and the select board uh, accepts the deed for the property. Uh, we will be bringing one more step to you next week. Um, but in essence, the property is here off of Bay Road. It is approximately 30 acres of land outlined in black. Um, it is adjacent to the Sweet Alice Conservation Area. The Norwatic uh, Fish and Game Club is here, and state land is in purple. Um, this has been reviewed by the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, state agencies as a high priority to protect the habitat as well as provide public outreach and access. It includes uh, a seven or eight acre pond. Uh, and as I've said before at previous meetings, we are partnering with the Kestrel Trust who will be purchasing the land that is excluded, which includes a house and about three and a half acres uh, right in the middle here. And uh, the Kestrel Trust is exploring the feasibility of citing their permanent office. As, as I've said before at previous meetings, Kestrel has never had a permanent office in Amherst or in the Valley, and they are gonna spend the next year, year and a half, exploring the financial feasibility and site feasibility of, of doing that. In the meantime, they will be purchasing that land from, and the house, from the Epsteins. If they determine that it's not feasible, then they would resell the house. So tonight, I'm simply asking for you to accept the deed for the open space, which we will be uh, closing on next week. And again, I'll bring one more step to you on the Wednesday the 12th in this process. If there are questions, happy to answer them. So, do we have any questions? We'll do this. I might add that this, there were many questions at town meeting, just to remind the board, um, the old trolley line uh, is included, a good portion of the trolley line is included along the western edge of this property. And our intent is to open a public trail uh, all the way up the range on the west side of this property, crossing over land we already own that Kestrel donated to the town and getting uh, hikers and mountain bikers and runners, trail runners up to the Mount Holyoke Range from uh, Bay Road and West Street. Um, so theoretically, you could uh, have a meal or a snack at Atkins. Uh, if they are okay, uh, proceed up to the range hiking or biking or uh, as a family, and then end your, your, your hike or bike 
back at Atkins for a snack or um, uh, whatever you'd like. So part of that village center um, amenity. Mr. Wong. Since we're being curious about <laughs> vegetable covered grain balls and things like that. <laughs> um, you, see, you mentioned the, the old trolley line. So would you be using the old right of way of the trolley line as the trail then? There's multiple trails already on this property, right. but um, I didn't know how much detail the board might like. But if I could, um, so just to remind uh, the viewers and, and the board, um, um, there is a subdivision going in right, right here. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Cole is building seven new homes and there's one existing home there. Um, Mr. Cole is donating the subdivision open space, which amounts to about six plus or minus acres here. Mm -hmm. And there will be a new trailhead right off of 116. That was a question too, okay. Right there, uh, this, this uh, subdivision road, it doesn't show on this map, but it's okay. already in. And uh, the house, I think one house is already for sale. So Mr. Cole is uh, uh, building a trailhead for us here. There's already a nice old farm road there that'll help us connect uh, again with a parking area here and right up to the trolley line trail. People will also be able to take the trolley line trail down and explore around the pond itself. Thank you. And then we'll partner with Kestrel on if their feasibility uh, 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 indicates that they should site there, then we'll work with them on uh, future assets on their property. Other, other questions? Oh, I'm gonna, I, I would make the motion, but I don't want to cut off discussion. Go right ahead. Okay. <coughs> this is 4D, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I move that pursuant to the vote taken under Article 12B of the April 30th, 2018 annual town meeting as continued, the select board accept the deed to parcels of land containing 28.1 acres more or less in the aggregate and located on Bay Road, Amherst from Martha and Lisa Epstein, trustees of Balderwood Realty Trust for open space purposes, which parcels are to be under the care custody and control of the Conservation Commission under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 8C. So we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? I, just, I have a yes, little fiddling question. So tonight on all our motions it says GL, General Law, but we usually have MGL. Are we changing the convention? Uh, no, I mean, I, I've noted where oh, you okay. said Mass just General wanted, Law. Right. So it is in Yeah, I think Mass. this is what so, comes from Town Council. Oh, sure they do the GL? Okay, yeah. Yeah. fine. That's what I was going to say. Council does that. I get frustrated because <laughs> I say people can't Google that the way they can MGL, but right. that's what I, the I term part is. You got it three times. I've got okay. three times on it, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Sorry, not related to the content. It's all. okay. It's part of the discussion. <laughs> is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. So that's unanimous with one member absent. Thank you. And as I said, we'll be bringing one house, cle house cleaning, uh, housekeeping uh, issue to you that we just discovered um, next week. Okay, great. I just have a quick question. In our yellow folders, we had a whole section about the quit claim deed. And is that just so that we could each see it bef in our free moments here before we do the sign folder tonight? Or was there something else we needed to know? No, I think that's the intent of that. But because we'll just all be signing one then in the right. Of right. I have an these. acceptance of D. Yes. Okay. Those are the long version for your own record keeping. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next we'll do North Common renovations, modifications. First look, as it were. So you'd be so kind as to take us through that. Share with us the. Yes. Anything about this in writing at this point? I don't think we I don't do. Because I, I don't remember finding anything in my packet. I just want to make sure no, that I, I wasn't think that overlooking the, the, something. I think we made the okay. judgment not to include it. We're allowed a, to do they, that. There was a PowerPoint that I think they had at the <laughs> public presentation, which didn't seem appropriate for our packet because it was all sorts of other that's things. Fine. So I think that's part of why we don't have any written material or sure printed I had on that. Something. Ooh. I think if I could, just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll start, and as Christine punches up this PowerPoint, um, uh, 
Ms. Brestrup and I are very excited to bring a first look to you of, of some of the discussions and some of the work that we've been doing together uh, with our design team and with our uh, consultants, Weston and Sampson, on the North Common. I think the board knows that we have been uh, informally working on this for a couple of years, uh, really refocused on this uh, in the <coughs> spring, and um, we have had multiple public meetings over time, uh, probably four or five in the last five years or so, uh, but once we brought it to town meeting for CPA funds, we brought some other funding together uh, using uh, uh, transportation fund money, and uh, we successfully hired Weston and Sampson. We've really been working very diligently, and we, what we wanted to do here, this is a, a, a shortened version of a slide presentation that was presented to the public last week in this very room, and um, Ms. Brestrup and I wanted to quickly go through a, a quick slide set with you um, I'll just do a, a very short intro and then turn it over to her because I think what you'd like to see and what we'd like to show you is the actual conceptual plans. So um, as you know, our, our team has uh, been inclusive. It, um, it is uh, collaborative. Um, it includes a number of town staff. It is co-led by the Historical Commission members and LSSE Commission members and then a good representation of town staff from engineering staff, our tree warden, uh, Mr. Mooring has participated, uh, Ms. Brestrup and her staff, um, as well as uh, members of those two uh, commissions. We, as I said, uh, hired Weston and Sampson Design Studios, landscape architects out of Boston, and we have been uh, very satisfied and very uh, excited by the work that they've done. Uh, as you know, uh, the common today is used for a variety of different purposes, very formal, if you will, and organized from town events, the lighting of the Merry Maple, uh, various uh, uh, celebrations and or uh, memorial ceremonies, farmers markets, tag sales, et cetera. And again, we're talking about the North Common, uh, as you know, but for the viewing public, not the main common to the South. Um, we, as part of our process, of trying to be inclusive and trying to gather as much information as possible, we've really uh, started out with talking about, so what do we want to honor? What do, what do we think is important about the North Common? And so through a variety of meetings, working with our design team, having a number of design meetings and charrettes, um, we, we've kind of outlined what we think makes the North part of the Common so important. And it's no surprise that the trees, the central nature, that it is right out in front of Town Hall, that it is central to our downtown, that it is at the four corners where thousands and thousands of people uh, come into town every year as tourists, as new students, as families, as residents, et cetera. All of those things we wanna celebrate and we wanna take advantage of. We also recognize that the Common has needed work for a long time and our effort here is to look not only to today's needs, but what can the common be for the future. We recognize that this is probably a once in a 50, 100 year opportunity that we as a community are going to have, and it's a very special place to be at. We have the momentum, we have the buy-in and the commitment from the business community, from the bid, from residents, uh, from committees and boards. Um, now is the time to do something very special there. Um, some of the opportunities, we'd like the space to be flexible. We'd like it to support um, uh, activities that people now use other spaces in town for. We'd like there to be good seating. We'd like there to be multi-generational opportunities. It needs to be ADA client, uh, compliant. It needs to have lighting at night. It currently doesn't. So uh, many of these things are kind of basic uh, needs of the common and then we also want to look to the future to say how can we design a space that is durable, flexible, creative, um, and serves now, gen the generation now and, and future generations. Next. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to read all of these. <laughs> So these are some of the things we heard. We heard from the public. We heard from boards and committees. We heard from businesses. Um, we heard lots about parking, obviously. We heard lots about 
uh, Boltwood Avenue and traffic and what parts of the North Common are special, what are quiet, um, what, are, what spaces are loud, what are the desire lines out there, where do people cross now, um, how important it is for Town Hall parking, Grace Church parking, Lord Jeff parking, et cetera. We heard a lot about trees. I think it, it's no surprise to the board and it was no surprise to staff that people um, value the trees that are on the North Common. They value the shade that those trees provide. Um, make use of planter boxes as appropriate. I, I didn't see that one before. Um, uh, but there was also a recognition in many of the meetings that um, there might be too many trees on the common and that the North Common and that some of those trees are in very poor condition because of their age or disease. So there was a recognition of that. Next, we heard from people supportive of public art. And we have tried in our conceptual designs, Weston and Sampson and our design team, to include flexible spaces that could support art. So we want to be open to that. We think that art on the North Common uh, not being specific as to what kind of art, but creating spaces that could support and have art now and in the future is important. Design inspiration, we, we talked and, and people brought lots of ideas from natural play elements to uh, many, many uh, references to Pulaski Park in Northampton, but also the recognition that this is a different space. One is that it is a common, not a park, but it's, it's in a different location. It's, um, it's uh, uh, some of the opportunities there for, uh, for, that we have for hardscape can complement uh, the green space that's available. We also have a site that is not very level and has about a, what, a 12 to 15 foot grade change from the northwest to the southeast. Mm -hmm. So how do you design for oh, elements that um, um, can achieve some of the goals that have been outlined? So I think today I'll turn, it, or I'll turn it over to Chris to talk about some of our schemes. Good evening. I'm so happy to be able to present this to you. Um, <coughs> as you all know, you've attended our meetings and you've seen uh, what we have online. We posted this um, presentation online. Um, but the North Common is very small. It's only about 3 quarters of an acre. So that green space is about three quarters of an acre, which in comparison to Kendrick Park, Kendrick Park is about three acres, and I think the South Common might be three acres as well. Um, the, the parking lot to the north of the North Common is about a third of an acre, so all together this space is about just a little bit over an acre, which um, is, is very small. It's surrounded by pavement, as you can see. It's surrounded by parking lots and, um, by parking lots and roadways. I hope this doesn't fall apart. Is that going to work? So yeah. Uh, it's also surrounded by beautiful buildings. We have the town hall. We have the Grace Church. We have the 19th century commercial buildings along Main Street and South Pleasant Street. So it really has a beautiful setting. Um, as Dave said, it slopes about 15 feet from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, which is quite a lot of slope. And what that means is uh, there are problems with uh, drainage, erosion, and handicapped accessibility, as well as accessibility for able-bodied people. Um, and also, as we know, there are lots of trees. Some are old and grand and worth saving, and some are old and not in good health. And the uh, tree warden has, has taken a pretty close look at them. There are also some invasive exotics. Um, some of the larger trees are actually Norway maples, which are our invasive exotics, and they uh, don't allow much to grow underneath them. So that uh, can be a problem if we wanted to have um, more types of vegetation. Um, we have held several meetings, and we've heard from business people, residents, board and committee members, and members of the public. Um, many of the things that Dave described uh, earlier, we have heard from people, but probably the most surprising thing we heard was um, multiple people at uh, different meetings talking about um, perhaps eliminating parking from the North Common. Um, back in the old days, there was no parking on the North Common, and we've seen images from the 50s where there was a kind of curvilinear parking lot that was um, emerging there, uh, but the idea is perhaps we don't want parking on the North Common. 
Um, the site is important. It's the main entry into our downtown. It's what people see first. They come to the top of the hill on Amity Street or Main Street, and that's, that's the image that they see. Uh, it's located at the center of civic life in town, right near Town Hall, the police station, and other civic activities. Um, the South Common, which is just south of Spring Street, provides a bigger open space for fairs and large gatherings. And this common, this North Common, is really a special place. It's different from Sweetser Park and Kendrick Park. It really has its own uh, type of characteristics. Um, it's quiet, shaded, and has a kind of intimate feeling. And we want to make it attractive and welcoming for visitors and residents. Um, so Weston and Sampson, uh, our consultants, were, were asked to prepare three concept plans. The first one, uh, based on what we heard uh, from our public meetings, was a bold plan that it considers eliminating parking from the North Common. The second plan is a conservative plan that um, keeps the parking and tries to make the rest of the common attractive for people. And the third plan is a compromise plan, which we consider might be the just right plan that we might end up choosing, but of course that's going to be up to you or uh, whoever makes the decision about these things. Um, the th I'm going to show you the three concepts that Weston and Sampson has developed. The first con concept is the, uh, the bold plan. And as you can see, parking is eliminated from the North Common uh, completely. In addition, um, I wonder if I could have that pointer. Uh, access from Boltwood, uh, Boltwood Walk or Bol Boltwood Avenue is cut off from Main Street, so it uh, provides a very nice gathering space here in front of Town Hall. In addition, there's a beautiful promenade from the northwest corner towards Town Hall. A lovely uh, space is created up here where there really is a, quite a bit of activity. And then we have the sweeping uh, walkways from one corner to another, which is very graceful. There's a gathering space in the middle, which could be used as a stage or a performance space or just a gathering space for people to sit. And then there's a kind of a large green lawn um, just down from the ga uh, gathering space. So um, this uh, proposal keeps many of the trees, but um, it adds many more. It also adds parking in front of Grace Church uh, on a diagonal. Um, so there, I think there are eight parking spaces added here. Um, and it terraces the site to control erosion, so that's what these walls are for. Um, you can see that although uh, 12 trees, existing trees, would be removed, uh, there would be six existing trees to remain, and this plan proposes 56 new trees. Of course, they include all of these little ornamental trees, which we may or may not actually uh, want to include. But, uh, so that number 56 might be a little big, but in any event, it gives you a, a sense of what the, what the plan is here. Um, as far as parking spaces go, um, the, the parking lot as it exists now has about 34 spaces, but if it were to be designed properly, it would probably only have 29 spaces. There are four spaces in front of Town Hall four and uh, five in front of the Episcopal Church for a total of 38 spaces that exist currently. Um, in this plan, it's, this is mislabeled, this is plan one, uh, we actually um, are eliminating 30 spaces. So that's, that's quite a big uh, change to make and that's what um, this plan proposes. But I will show you how beautiful it could look. Here is what the existing view is of Town Hall from uh, South Pleasant Street, and this is what it could be like with uh, veterans celebrating Veterans Day and people sitting on the, on the walls and uh, people approaching Town Hall in a very graceful manner. Um, the next plan is uh, Schematic Plan 2, which is really the conservative plan. Um, that retains much of the parking in the north part of the site, uh, although it does uh, repave the parking with the kind of um, concrete pavers or something like that, so it wouldn't be just asphalt. Uh, this, the reason for that is that we could then create a kind of a concourse or a plaza here in front of Town Hall. Um, this would be raised up so that it would be um, more or less, uh, there wouldn't be too much of a drop from the corner here and there wouldn't be too much of a rise up to Town Hall. Uh, what we call this is a tabled parking lot. So there would be a rise coming in from Boltwood, or excuse me, from Main Street and a, a going down towards Boltwood Avenue, and you would con, uh, continue the access from Main Street. This 
plan could also have some diagonal parking tucked in along the edge of Boltwood Avenue. Um, it has a central gathering space, similar to the other one, and um, again, the graceful uh, sweeping pathways. This one also adds some little uh, gathering spaces off the pathways that could be smaller, more intimate spaces. I think this plan keeps more of the existing trees, as you can see, and removes fewer and adds fewer trees. So altogether, this is um, really a conservative plan. And then uh, I'll show you the, um, the images. Here's the existing image of what this looks like. And here it is at Christmas time or holiday time when we um, light the merry maple and gather in, in that space. And it could be quite lively and, and beautiful. Um, the last plan is schematic plan three, which we consider the just right plan. At, um, perhaps we shouldn't reveal our, uh, our thoughts on the matter, but <laughs> Um, some of us have called this the compromise plan, but I think uh, perhaps the just right plan sounds a little better. Um, it provides some parking in the northeast corner here. I think it's a better proportioned uh, kind of <coughs> plaza space that could be used for public events when it's not being used for a parking lot. Uh, again, it would be paved with concrete pavers or something like that. It provides a more graceful approach from the northwest corner. Um, and the uh, central space is a little bit bigger than in the other two uh, images, and it's not so much a, a performance space or a stage area as it is a, a quiet, nest, nestled space um, with surrounded by stone walls. Uh, all of these pathways are handicapped accessible, um, and this uh, plan here provides diagonal spaces along in front of Grace Church. It could also provide some diagonal spaces right here to the southwest of Town Hall and potentially some parallel parking spaces over here. So the way it's shown, it would lose about 13 spaces, but if we did some of that uh, picking up of spaces like I just described, we may only lose about five spaces. Um, we c could grab a couple over here where there's no longer going to be a driveway into a parking lot. Um, this one also allows more trees, trees to remain than the first scheme. So uh, we hope that you find these plans attractive and potentially workable. And um, we'd like to have your comments and your guidance on uh, how we will move forward with this project. Can you show the before and after on? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to show that. Yeah, this is really, how could I forget? Here it is existing, and here it is proposed. Isn't that beautiful and quiet? So I have the luxury, being the chair, to ask the first question. Um, so a couple of both in that last plan and in the second plan where, I think it was the second plan, no. The last plan and the first plan, there's a section, if not the entirety of Boltwood, that is then sort of blocked off from Main Street. And it indicates for like the Ingle parking in front of uh, Grace Episcopal Church that you're essentially getting to that via going through the back parking lot here. So we, I, I, the concern I have, and, and maybe they've thought about this as far as addressing this, is that <clears throat> to access that parking, you have to go behind this building and negotiate this parking lot, which doesn't have a lot of extra space, to then come out onto that one way to make the angle parking or to even, you know, sort of access anything there. I was wondering if, if the folks from uh, uh, Weston and Sampson had comment about that, or if you received feedback around that that particular question, and we and what it. kind of impact it might have on Main Street here, people trying to get through the back and sort of impact on this parking area as well. So it's a great question. I want to just make one comment about conceptual plans. We we always run that risk that when we put things out there, um, there are focus points, focal points that people want to talk to talk talk about, and that's great. What's what's wonderful about these plans, and we discovered this last week in, in a really robust conversation, uh, and I can't remember which board members were part of that, that there's some mix and match that, that can go on between the different <coughs> concepts. So we're hoping that with comments from you, comments from boards, committees, and from the public, we can do some mixing and matching of the best of these three and this did come up last week. I'll, I'll have Chris specifically address it, but 
Um, absolutely, there are things that we want to pull out from one that might go better with three, something from two, move that into three, or vice versa. So I just want the board and those people watching at home, and if you look at the, on, on the entire slide deck on the planning board, uh, planning department uh, website, um, I want people to stay open also to the fact that we're going to try to take the best of all of these plans and put them into one. Sure. So um, you are definitely correct that this plan number one does eliminate access from Main Street to Boltwood Ave, and people would be directed to go through the parking lot behind Town Hall to access these parking spaces here in front of Grace Church. That is different from plan three, which I will show you. It still has a single lane that comes plan through, right? Plan three has a single lane that comes through. And it is kind of a tabled situation like you find in front of the Jones Library where you go up over the, um, the crosswalk. So it's really a gentle rise and, and gentle back down again, but you would have uh, full access from the north to all of Boltwood Avenue. Thank you for that. May I follow up on that particular issue? And sure. Other people can ask other questions. So one of the things I found challenging about last week's conversation, and thank you for reminding me that yes, I'd looked at the planning board website, but the entire select board was not advised to look at the planning board website to look at this slide deck ahead of time, so they didn't know to do that, is that the way that question came up at the forum last night, as you well know, is that an audience member asked it. The consultant didn't see the need to bring it up. And so there's a difference between conceptual planning and mix and match and ideas and then just plain not explaining things. And so to not explain that you can't get there from here unless you go winding behind a town, which may be what we decide we want to do, but for the consultant to have said flat out, oh, you noticed that, um, yeah, we didn't tell you about that, but good job noticing it. I found more than a little frustrating in terms of how to have an effective conversation because then we couldn't really talk about that issue because we were so tied up in all the other really interesting ideas that people had. So I would just, um, I guess for future reference, mention that surprises like that from consultants are not always that welcome by at least some members of the audience to find out that they're told, oh, gee, I'm glad you noticed that we weren't going to bring it up because it is, a, it is part of let's rethink this, and maybe we would rethink it that way, but it is different than what is the standard street structure to get to parking spaces. Right. Uh, the thing I think about just in general, because of the way Maine, Amity, and Pleasant intersect in a offset manner. What's that? Is that what it's called? The dog leg, right. But it, but it uh, you know, People make different choices about how they interact with downtown in automobiles or any other sort of transportation um, relative to that. And that starts to have a, there's a peripheral start of effect that needs to be considered, I think. And so that's why I bring this up because, um, you know, I'll be perfectly honest, I avoid that intersection a lot because it's complex. There are times it's fine and there are times when it's, you know, it's, it's uh, a difficult intersection to navigate, uh, you know, if you need to make left turns, that sort of thing. So things like turning left on Boltwood and then turning left on Spring Street sometimes are handy to do sometimes. Uh, or, or, you know, there, there are options people exercise because they have the ability to do that now. And, and so as we change those and we think about these things, um, we just need to factor that in. In other words, you know, people cut through the parking garage to avoid that intersection because they can navigate through the parking garage and go up Kellogg Street and take the lights in front of the St. Bridges Church to get to the northern end of downtown. So you know, so people make choices around uh, around the designs that happen. And so we just want to be cognizant of that as we as we move ahead. That's really all. It's not a complaint about it necessarily. It's just the facts as as people interact with their space and the spaces and the com you know, the complexities of those spaces. Ms. Well, that wasn't my original, but I'm going to piggyback on what you said. So my grandson as a, a new license holder of about two weeks was saying that he was going through the central intersection. I was explaining about the dog look and he said, this other driver went out and then he started backing up and then he backed up into me and I got out and like 
he, he started yelling at me because I didn't back up too. And it's like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it, even for people who grew up here, that's a kind of squirrely intersection. Right. So I, I, and I'll make my comments. Um, yeah, it's always better when you're looking at stuff, it's much more seductive to see the green than the gray for the <laughs> paving. I think using the behind town hall is just should be eliminated. That for, I won't go into why, I just, we could talk about it, but uh, looking at the design, yeah, but in reality, no, and you explain part of it. Um, what I liked in the, um, one of the features I liked in some of the designs was that sort of strong access that um, kind of leads the eye to town hall when you're at the other side. Um, and I think there's ways to keep that with different materials and different designs, but um, you know, kind of that view where you get that, um, yeah, but maybe not that, because that's the one that has no parking, but there's a way to keep that. I think I was moving more towards the compromise, and I was really looking at the numbers of lost parking. So I see the parking as a resource, probably similar to the way the Conservation Commission thinks about wetlands. So I'm on a no net loss kind of view. So I'm looking at net loss, and there may be ways to mitigate some of the net loss, and maybe if diagonal parking is a good idea, let's just do that and get more. So I would be very um, concerned about the amount of lost parking, even though it's very tempting to just take the whole acre and make it like a beautiful park. Um, I myself would not be in favor of that unless I could see some replacement, some other things, we have other issues not related to this design around how we're gonna deal with a municipal parking district. And so looking at our parking comprehensively and what we're gaining and losing. We have some new downtown developments that putting more pressure on that resource is something I am um, very conservative about. Um, but I think we can still have, like I said, the design element of the view of that sort of strong boulevard. I like the mixed material, so um, it can be parking, but it can also be closed off to be an event, so it can double or triple in its in its use. So I think some some of the designs that do that um, give us more flexibility. Um, so those are kind of sort of global comments. I you know trees some should come down, some amount of light opening it up. Um, yeah, I'm not going to comment on the planning. Those are really conceptual, and you're right, uh, Mr. Zumek. When you show conceptuals, you risk you know people getting hung up about the lighting plan on something very conceptual and not wanting that light over here or over there. And I, so I'm trying to talk in some sort of broad strokes, but um, yeah, it'd be great to redo the North Common and try to blend all these ideas. But I just say for me, I'm not on the bold plan wavelength right now. Ms. Brewer. This is completely off topic, but I'm frustrated that we have a new member of the press who's not been sitting at the press table and just randomly takes photos during the meeting without previous, there's been no announcement that press is present that isn't sitting at the press table, so people in the audience don't know that press is here. And I do find it distracting, and we don't have to allow distraction. So I wonder if maybe you could just work out with that individual who I obviously don't want to be badly quoted by, but just probably <laughs> offended, um, to not do that in the future unless they've made prearrangements and we've announced that they're here because normally it's fair for audience members to assume that the press is at the press table and we used to even try and announce that, but we kind of gave up once we said press right. on the press table. And uh, the taking photos during the meeting, we had long discussions about that in previous years and it was it's not illegal. It's just something that's supposed to be arranged ahead of time. Right. So I'll Thank you. When we take a break, I'll capture a moment of his time, hopefully, and we'll, we'll clear that up. Mr. Wall, did you have a comment on it? It's the same thing. I think we had a sort of an informal sense that one doesn't have to step in front of the table. There's sort of an invisible boundary there right. because it's disruptive and people get in the way of between them and us. Comments about the design plans. You do that too. I mean, <laughs> as people who were there know, on the meeting last week, I spoke out in flavor of the bold plan because I hate parking. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 mean I, I take parking very seriously, um, and, you know, for, for practical and other reasons, and I think that Ms. Kruger is talking about it in terms of resources quite appropriate. Um, you know, that said, Mr. Zomek and Ms. Brestrup spoke last week and again tonight about this being a 50-year chance or a 100-year chance. You know, go back 100 years. We had a trolley line that went from Sunderland up through the town and over the notch and so forth. Then came cars and buses, and people didn't want that anymore. You know, 
you may not want a parking lot there in 50 years, not to mention 100. And you know, one of the things that was mentioned the other night was we could, we could phase it in. We could have like a small parking lot, and then maybe later we can get rid of it. And everybody said, no, no, no. You know, once you've made a decision in Amherst, it's going to get you know, it's going to get stuck there. People will not change it. So I mean, I, I guess I would say this is you know, parking is an important resource, but it's also, uh, it's, it's it's not unique. There are parking parking places can be put in lots of places. There's only one common. This is a piece of our colonial and early national landscape. And I was saying the other night when I was, you know, I first joined the Historical Commission in 2002, there were always people talking about encroachments in the common, and I got all radical and excited and thought, let's fill in Spring Street. And then I learned more and I thought better, and I realized that Spring Street had been a cut through since the 19th century, and they put houses there in the church, and that's okay. And I realized that the problem is not Spring Street, it's this piece, because this piece of green space is too small by itself compared to the rest of the common, and it's desecrated by that parking lot. And you know, I mean, person's desecration is another person's <laughs> enhancement, Mr. Walker. You no, know, it isn't. It's just ugly. It's objectively, it's objectively <laughs> no, true. It's this is opinion. not debatable. It's but, you opinion. know, the thing is, I mean... Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But, you know, the thing is, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., this looks nice like this with, the, with you know, the multi-material, uh, uniform-level parking space that could be a plaza maybe, you know, a few times a year. Uh, not taking into account the oil stains and grease and mess that's going to be all over it. But also, you're, you're going to be looking at cars from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. It's not going to be the most attractive thing in the world. And I, th you know, I think if the town hall is one of the most important buildings, if the town common is one of our most important pieces of cultural landscape, you know, we owe it to ourselves and the people 50 or 100 years later to do something bold with that. So I know it may not be possible, but I would really like us to reach for that. Number two is a non-starter as far as I'm concerned. Number three has got potential. But I'd really like us to think outside the box about this. I guess, you know, if it, if it were up to me, and I'm not a planner or an engineer, you know, I wondered, because you'd mentioned the possibility of angled parking on the street, you know, what if, because there used to be parking on the external, on the north side of that, um, before the parking lot, as Ms. Brester mentioned, there was a curvilinear pattern with cars parked there, or people mentioned the angled parking if we took a bigger piece out of the common on the west side. You know, I don't know what the engineering aspects are, but I would urge us to seek other ways to find that and to think about this. I agree certainly with what my colleagues have said about this driving through the parking lot behind Town Hall. That's a, if there's through traffic, it's a non-starter. Because also, you're not coming right behind Town Hall. You've got to go around the generator plus two rows of cars. So you're making a huge loop. And the logistics of that, I think, are extremely problematic if it's for through traffic as opposed to the Town Hall parking lot as such. But I would, again, just like to put in a vote for thinking boldly and thinking 100 years ahead of the time. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to shift gears for a second, just talking about sort of design things. So, so one of the things that's in a couple of these is, is kind of a, a, I'll label it as an amphitheater. Maybe it's not considered that. It's a very small sort of space, not the smallest spaces, but I think it's in this one in that middle area. Um, and, and, and it could be there and it could be elsewhere. And I've been in, in locations where they've created a, a small space that, uh, most of the time it's just a place, to, a little plaza area to walk through, but they set the acoustics of it up so that if you stand in a central location and speak, there's a slight amplification by virtue of the construction of the, of the space, which could be really great when you talk about a sort of civic meeting place. And this could be in front of town hall or whatever to sort of create that kind of place where uh, if someone were to come and speak, you know, you know this was on a campus, so, you know, uh, Oftentimes it would be someone proselytizing their religion, but it could be anything. Um, but I think it is an opportunity where uh, it makes it easier to have a conversation without amplification, or if you do have amplification, then it becomes even easier to, to, to uh, have people here uh, in that kind of a space. So thinking in terms of that kind of thing as, as you create these sort of public areas or meeting spaces to think about that acoustic component and can, can that be accommodated, can that be added to the mix. Um, as you think about that. So I just want to offer that idea as something as far as, that's a more nitty gritty detail kind of thing, but it is, uh, I think there's an opportunity to do something kind of powerful around that that's, that's useful for, for those sort of civic event kind of things. Um, just to, and we're getting into nitty gritty, um, just, but I would say, in response to my colleague, Mr. Wald, um, I, I don't think not embracing plan number one means that one is not open to bold thinking. We may have a difference of opinion and a legitimate one. Um, I would ask, as I have on a lot of things to do with parking, if the downtown parking working group has yet been involved in thinking about the parking considerations. I mean, I know they've been, can go to an open forum and participate, but I think this is starting to shape up and that might be a good touch point for the brief life they have 
left as a committee. Um, they've been thinking about this a lot, so they might want to be included. And then and you talked about the uh, kind of oratory space or the soapbox space. Um, what I see is missing, and I've talked about this a lot, wanting some kind of a play area. Or it said in one of those lists, natural play structure. And so people really lauded Pulaski Park, and one of the nice things is there's things to climb on and walk on. It can be rocks it doesn't, or timbers. It doesn't have to be you know, a constructed structure. But I've, I've lamented for a long time that there's no place to bring your two-year-old and sit and have you know, a cup of coffee or tea and have something to do. So this looks very adult to me, and I don't, I know, you know, you can do a lot with three quarters of an acre um, of green area, and what I see missing is the playful area, and maybe that could be communicated. It's time for my list, okay. <laughs> um, and Ms. Brestrup and Mr. Zomek and Mr. Bachelman have already, and Mr. Wald, I'm sure he had put his fingers in his ears though, <laughs> already heard this last week. Mm -hmm. um, and if I mischaracterize anything based on, on what I heard versus my own just made up thing, that would be good mm -hmm. to know. Um, following directly on the heels of what you mentioned about kids running around, although we all know that we appreciate the uh, railroad ties that are probably older than Mr. Zomek that are out there um, surrounding the trees and some of us are mm -hmm. a little more safety conscious now and wouldn't let our kids play on them but <laughs> back in the day they were something whereas unfortunately um, the consultants seem to characterize someone's concern for play ability as well they can run around <laughs> and I thought well I don't think it's been a while <laughs> I do think it's been a while since you had little kids um, because running around is really important but just having a few things and so I think um, there was definite sentiment that there was not like a, no one was talking about putting a play structure there this isn't the Midwest after all we don't have sidewalks to everything we don't have parks with play structures everywhere but this is New England but something more along the natural features like Pulaski Park has in that respect that's a more natural feature feature they can mess around on um, to keep them entertained and that still fits in with the aesthetic. Um, the Peace Vigil folks were especially concerned that they did get heard as when, to how that would work just in terms of not only space to stand but like you know are they up against a tree are they do they have a place to sit you know, and and I know that the consultant and staff are working on that together but just to make clear for those who weren't there that that did come up. Um, I, I would argue that the business owners who spoke at that particular um, thing were not widely representative of the business community. One, because they weren't presenting themselves as doing so. And secondly, one has their own parking lot and the other does relatively little walk-in business. So to say that they have the full breadth of opinion on whether or not it's necessary to have cars in town, front of town hall, I think is going to vary a lot depending on which side of the street you're on and what kind of business you get, and if they mostly come on the bus, or they mostly come by appointment, or if they mostly come by car. And I know I'm certainly always surprised by the number of people who are parked in front of town hall to do town hall business. I keep thinking, why aren't you doing this online? And although we might you know, sort of force some of that, I suppose, if we have less parking in front of town hall, I think there's still just a lot of people who, for whatever reason, feel the need to do it in person. And so that, you know, we, since we already, it's one thing to say, well, if you've never had parking in front of your beautiful historic town hall, then you just don't have it and nobody's ever expected it. But to take it away without some substitute, I think, gets a lot more difficult for the people who are here already. For the people who don't live here now, they won't know the difference. Um, but that, that is difficult, I think, for some people. I think that one of the, and I'm not, I will admit, I'm not even sure I really truly understood this concern, but in one of the drawings, there was some concern expressed about whether or not it was basically cutting the common, the North Common off from South Pleasant Street and the corner. So you talk about coming up Amity Street and saying, ooh, look, there's gonna be, there's Town Hall and there's a parking lot, right? Doesn't look great. But do you also want to be looking at a wall of trees instead of that, rather than instead of connecting, sort of, and so how that works. And so I think that people were trying to play around with that a little bit, like how could it be both enclosed but not closed off right. in that respect. And so just more and more things to keep thinking about, and I know a lot of work was done between the May meeting and the August meeting in addition to the many meetings that took place over several years before that. 
I, I would also say that I'm a little misled by the quite lovely and beautiful after picture that looks just like Mary Maple to me now, even mm. with the junk that's out there now. <laughs> so it's beautiful and lovely at Mary Maple because it's dark <laughs> and we have lights and everybody's having a good time. Not really sure that's a good selling point. Um, I think that mainly covers my concerns that other people haven't already mentioned. And so <clears throat> not wanting to give up the parking, which is at a premium, without having some sense of what we're doing with it instead. Certainly the angled parking was an interesting thing that I was glad came from the May meeting to the August meeting because I realized, you know, <coughs> we only have so much money. We're giving the consultants and people are like, oh, dream up some more new things. And, and they were able to come up with some ideas associated with that. So I think that's really helpful. Given all of these things and given that we are also looking at the possibility of, for the first time in more than 50 or 100 years, the idea of having a band shell on the common, which we have, of course, is not part of this project, but some people have argued should be considered either A, for the North Common rather than despoiling the uh, traditional long grassy area, or at least considered in conjunction with and the timing on that. So as much on the one hand, it's like, we've been talking about this for so long, could we just go ahead and do it? Um, I think in the context of considering a band shell that's also going through obviously a number of approvals, as I've indicated to people, no one has agreed to put a band shell on the common yet. It's going through many, many steps before that could even conceivably happen. That's not happening anytime soon, it's just being worked on. I am uncomfortable with doing anything other than basically the status quo with this facility during our limited time here as a select board. Because I do not see, given the transition provisions, which we've started to weigh things against, I mean, releasing from 61A is not that thing because right. that's a timeliness issue. Um, I'm not convinced we are in the right position to be making this decision about this. And I'm hoping that given that we're already talking the fall, not the spring paving, that it could potentially be something that would be very early on the town council's mind, even though it'll be snowing by then, potentially. But rat, and I'm not saying six months from now they should bring it up. I'm saying this could be a plan that's pretty far along that could present to them as a fairly early thing, a fairly early win they could decide on after a couple of meetings because they you know, would hear about it one night, go back out to all the districts, say, look, all these people have already looked at, all these people have all these sign-in sheets, have been to all these meetings, this is all the feedback that's been incorporated. And that to me feels like, given where we are in the process, if we'd been I know that it must be frustrating for staff and they're like over there saying, come on, we've waited this long. But um, that really feels like the more appropriate approach for me. But again, with the idea that it not being a long time from now, a relatively short time from now, so potentially we could even still move along with, with the construction schedule as might be theorized if we acted now. Mr. Wall? I'll of course respectfully disagree with my dear colleague. Uh, you know, I, 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 it's not gonna happen. Um, I understand the idea, I mean, there is, I mean, obviously there's some merit to the abstract idea of uniting this with work on the south part of the common. That's gonna take forever. That's just a non-starter. But if I recall correctly, Mr. Zomek and Ms. Brestrup talked about trying to finish this sort of late-ish in 2019, summer, fall, thereabouts. You know, if you think about the schedule, if we don't act on this, it's dead. It's gonna be 2021. Uh, the other, I'm not saying we should be precipitous, and I think Ms. Kruger raised questions too about the proper parties to consult with regarding parking and so forth. I guess my concern is, uh, aside from the fact I don't think it's an issue about us and impinging on town council's freedom of action because it's been in the pipeline for years and years and years. I was part of Historical Commission and Design Review Board and we saw these very preliminary plans. Mr. Zomek knows that I think DPW was doing, could we put a bandstand at the top of the North Common and electrical outlets and things like that? I mean a platform, so it's not new. It's been through lots of phases. But the other thing is, you know, not to to praise us at the expense of somebody else, but we kind of actually know what we're doing here. You know, you've got very experienced, five very experienced people on the select board. They've got experience with all parts of town government. They bring to it experience, for example, of planning, historical issues, land use, and all that. If you're gonna give this to a town council of 13 people, maybe a few people who have some experience, it's basically people who are new to town government in a new situation, in a new context. Um, they may not have the background 
to make a judgment, which might be the right instinct, but it might lead them to put it off even longer, practical questions aside. I don't think it's going to happen in six months. Uh, and as far, you know, as far as going back out to the districts, it doesn't need to. It's, there's been a public process. We're pretty good at public process. And I mean, so much so we'd like to talk and never do anything. You know, I, I think it would be a fatal mistake to put it off because of concern about the town council. And I don't think the town council would make a better decision. Uh, whether we make the right one is a different question, but I think that we're e equipped to make a proper decision if we agree that the process has been carried out to the full extent. Because I do, I do really have a great deal of respect for what town staff has been trying to do. You know, going after this for years and years, and I'll shut up in a second, because we tried this before with a robust public process with the historical commission between the one I was in charge of and the current one. Uh, they had meetings and so forth in the Jones Library, and we applied for the grant, and the state said it wanted a still more robust public process, and we gave it to them, and we got the grant, so let's do it. Um, just a couple of things. I, I generally agree with uh, Mr. Wald on this. Um, I would like to decouple this from the bandstand. I think that's, that's right. Sorry, that's what I was trying so to say. So I, 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 although I appreciate, you know, there's always uh, some wisdom in sort of master planning and having it bigger and include it, but I think the bandstand will or will not happen, and it's on its own trajectory. Um, I think that we should keep moving this along. We were asked to react. We're sitting here now in our current capacity. Um, this will go through a number of other stages and approvals needed from council so we can bring it as far as is appropriate during our remaining existence. Um, and it's conceivable somebody could change it or put the kibosh or have to give permission for using the land or whatever it is. So it's not done, but I think um, in the interest of, of not jeopardizing the project that we need to keep going, um, but I don't think we're going to be the final, final answer on this, so I, I and Mr. Um, Buckelman has his hand up. But anyway, that's just my opinion on that part. So thank you, Mr. Chair. I think um, you made, the board made lots of really good points. I thought we were all sort of surprised by the public meeting when it was held last week over the reaction to people who were looking for a more aggressive, um, bolder approach. Um, I think that uh, was surprising to us, it was interesting to hear. Many of the points that you raised were raised that evening, including the place structure issues and things. One of the things on all the plans, you'll notice that we count two things we thought that were really important to the community. One was trees, how many trees are there, how many are we gaining or losing, and then the other was parking. Uh, we default, right now there are 34 parking spaces in the parking lot. If we were just to repave and repaint, we'd wind up with 29 spaces. So that's, we, we said we need to really begin with 29. Right. And we, we recognize that losing a lot of parking is, could be controversial. And although at the meeting people weren't that concerned about it. One, but I, one meeting, one Yeah, meeting. I, I agree with you on that. So, um, but those were the things, those were the sort of rough metrics we were looking at. Um, I think we also made the de um, determination that this is a project that's been in the pipeline for a really long time and that to sort of say wait and whether we, we caught, wa wondered whether we should bring it to the board or not, but it had been in the pipeline. It had been received funding from town meeting. There, there hasn't been any doubt that there should be some things uh, done on the North Common and on the parking lot. Um, and then the question is, well, the uh, reason we're here tonight is to give you a first look, and so we're not asking for decisions, but uh, there needs to be more public process with the designers here to listen more to you. Um, <coughs> but um, we felt like, uh, in sort of in keeping with Mr. Wall, that you had been engaged in the process in a pretty long way, but also recognizing that the council, when it takes office, will have a veto. That we have to borrow the money. We need a two-thirds vote from the council to move this project forward. And we didn't want to lose the whole uh, months of design in terms of, um, you know, for the, through the whole winter because it's something we've been talking about for so darn long. And I was hoping that from my perspective, can we got to keep it moving. And so that was the goal in having an informed board say, here's where we think we should be as a town. and. Um, take that stance, recognizing that there are additional approvals that need to come down the road, specifically in my mind with the borrowing authority that we would need from the council. Absolutely. We're not going to be the final. No, they, if two thirds of them don't agree with it, it ain't going to happen. Mr. Zomek, was there something you wanted to comment on? I was kind of going around the board members and you had sort of in, hinted you might be ready to offer. The conversation has moved beyond that. Past that. Yeah. So I think at this point, is there, if there's other comment or feedback for, 
for them relative to these that would be I don't want to cut it off but I also don't want to extend it beyond what we need to so but if you have some other things you want to offer so a couple of things sure. one is um, a couple of places to check in with and the other is in the absence of any timeline whatsoever here we are, we're working with nothing we're just spitballing well maybe the town council will decide well maybe it'll be this well maybe it'll be that maybe it'll be 2021 says mr wald which <laughs> there I think was is one a ridiculous right? exaggeration yeah, and so um that is why we're just you know first look and i get that but it makes it difficult to know about direction so moving away from that for a moment just as if assuming downtown parking working group which to you know we all recall my conversation about downtown parking working group and its continued existence at this moment but if it is continuing to exist at this moment it is definitely a place that needs to be this needs to be discussed with before anything further happens with select board and we know that the tree warden's been involved obviously these trees decisions are not being made without him and so we appreciate that being brought up and we know that's been happening DAAC disability access advisory definitely needs some say in this as well just to feel like they are understanding um, you know where the part where the handicap parking would move anyway you know as you already said if we're gonna just just redoing it just keeping status quo which nobody wants keeping status quo mo would move from 34 to 29 where does it move the handicap space I mean just like basic information like that that they need I think would be really helpful to them and then beyond that I guess you know leaving here I'm trying to understand we say it's first look so what does that mean in terms of what is going to happen next and so I guess I would be looking for if not tonight then certainly in future a timeline that gives us some idea of we would like to have this set of decisions made within this time period in order to meet this construction time frame and therefore this is where we plug in right so I have one other quick thing I'll piggyback on that and I'll get to Mr. Zomek just talking about sort of people to consult I don't know if you've reached out you know there's a pretty significant bus stop on Main Street so I don't know if you've connected with PVTA about that or not and and at this point it's it's premature in some respects but I think as we discuss parking and whether we're adding or taking away parking and and how that part of the common uh, plays with with uh, that bus stop feature and whether does that bus stop move? Does it stay there? Does it, you know, those things, I just don't know. It's a pretty easy one. We've discussed that at great length with, with uh, staff and with designers, and the bus stop would stay and needs to stay there. That's one of the reasons we didn't add angled parking on Main Street is right. the width is not great enough, and that is also a very significant delivery stopping point for delivery trucks delivering to various businesses on Main Street, on South Pleasant, and, and Boltwood. Right. So... So it's one of the reasons you see it, it doesn't really change. There's a short, a, um, a small bump out there, but other than that, the bus stop remains. So one of the things that I'll just point out to my colleagues, which they may or may not have noticed, is if you notice, the bus shelter seems like it's on the sidewalk backwards. That's by design. And the reason why is because there's not sufficient room for handicap access as it, as it would normally exist with it open to the street. And so that's why it's on backwards, so people can be in the shelter and then get around and get on the bus. And so... Just speaking of you know connecting with them as you design things, that location of that and DAAC will have a an, a fair amount to say about that kind of thing. So just want to offer that as other other places to go and see see comments. So you had some other things. Yeah, you I just wanted about. to add. So um, we fully intend to go to the downtown parking working group, the DRB, the DAAC. Again, we really didn't want to go out to all those groups, expend that kind of staff time and and board and committee time without first giving you a first look, and, and we're taking copious notes here, and of course the public meeting was just last week, so the designs you see tonight in Weston and Samson's mind and in our design team's uh, uh, collective uh, approach have already changed, but those were the designs we showed to the public last week. We wanted to bring those same ones to you. In that PowerPoint that is online, there is a proposed timeline Given some discussion with the chair and with the town manager, we, we really thought an open-ended conversation for tonight was probably a better approach without potentially backing you, the board, into some sort of a, a, you know, a, a corner that, that wouldn't be appropriate. I, I will say that, that um, throughout our process, we have talked about bidding this in the late winter for a spring-summer construction after the colleges graduate. That is our rough timeline. 
Um, so we wanted to bring you a first look here. We would like to come back with Weston and Samson with one or two of these designs more fully developed, having gotten feedback from DRB, DAC, and the, the Downtown Parking Working Group, and bring that to you in October so that you can, uh, that will give you some time to think about the process and where you would like it to go from there. Um, um, I was, I was um, encouraged by the conversation here that we recognize that the council would, as the town manager said, have the, the final say obviously in the bonding, but if we could continue to move this along in the fall and at some point uh, in early December when you move in a different direction and the council takes uh, office, we could then introduce them when the time is right to where we are in that process. So we're encouraged, we're not discouraged at all. We recognize the change and we just wanna keep this moving. Um, and again, if the timeline shifts in 19 some, we can make some adjustments, so. Quick question, Ms. Kruger, the Downtown Parking Working Group, when are they scheduled to meet? I'm just thinking about sort of, just laying out that timeline, is there enough time for Going them to memory, take this the, up? Uh, and I think that the chair, uh, Ms. Gray Mullen, was waiting for Mr. Malloy to come back from vacation. It was, I think it's in flux, but I know it, it was September, but I don't know if we've said it yet, but okay. it, so I, I can't give you that a date okay. right now. But in September, could get Not on so the, late it could it get on the, factor into it. I mean, October they could get season. their first look, obviously. Right. It's still, you know, this is early on in this. We, we would also like to get to you at the next meeting just some broad cost estimates as well because um, mm -hmm. we, you know, we're not there yet because we have three conceptual yep. plans and we have not put, Weston mm -hmm. and Samson has not put numbers to those plans. Which may shift a lot. Yeah. If I could just add one yes, last. Please. So even though we were sort of critical and arguing in a robust, <laughs> robust manner, um, I think it's very exciting to see it coming along. And, and it was a point where we said, you know, faster, sooner, we've got this appropriation, let's get this done. So I'm, I'm, it's actually uh, really nice to see this work happening. So thank you for bringing it to us. Absolutely. We appreciate yeah. that because we heard those comments. When is this yeah, going to happen? When is this going to happen? We pushed. Yeah. Now we're pushing and we're, we're making progress. So are there other questions or comments for them relative to this? If not, thank you both very much. Appreciate the time. We'll work with the chair and, and the town manager on, on a date appropriate and, and have Weston and Sampson with, with you the next, uh, in October. Thank you. They're not gonna come back next week with. <laughs> <laughs> that would be impressive if they did that, but uh, that's probably a little too quick. Thank, thank you both you very much. much. I'm gonna take a short facilities. So why don't we take a a quick recess here. It's about 8.25. Well, let's take about a five-minute recess and give everybody a chance to stand up, stretch your legs a moment. We can turn off various things and, and regroup.
somebody said they're being distracted, somebody saying I have to get prior approval, or somebody saying, you know, it's disruptive. And you know what? Um, no one substantiated this in their complaint. And you're running a number of these hundreds of email blogs, and yet where is the contradiction that you're making these statements to say, look, we talked to Mr. Tomasello, we can discuss the lawsuit. Sure. Okay? So what's the question of hygiene here? How is that? Sure. And how do you think the law? You know, and you, may, you allow three counts of this, and you still dismiss this case. So you're, you're, you're saying, you know, I would say that the, the, the court, the, you know, the way it's being approached, it's basically just, you know, and I'll, I'll take a bite of this because I didn't, you know, it's not like the case was tomorrow. Well, I think you should eat this. I, 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 you know, <laughs> I, I understand you, you just started and, and said it, but I think that the issue is, is the idea is that it's, um, it's, it's an, you know, maybe you have a real estate deal and you're making these kinds of complaints and things like that, but that, you know, you have to show that you have real knowledge of the thing. So it's not really the same as sure. this is, I think that this case is, you know, it's just that it's about being one of the first people to realize that. Yeah. And, and again, I think you're, you're doing a good thing because you're doing that, you know, as a woman, you're like, hey, you get the first one, you go on the board, and, and you almost use that as a way of just pushing back the board. Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's just as a practical matter. I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying this is a discrimination case, but I can tell you that we have to start from what the commission has said and what the court, the commission has very consistent views, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, you know, maybe you should listen to what the commission says. I mean, the amicus brought out two things that are kind of, you know, maybe quite exceptional here. Yeah. And it's kind of, you know, where, where is that authority? Who's on the task force committee that uh, allows our deal to be disciplined under Buckley? Who is it? Who are they? I mean, I'm getting this declaration from the people that are responsible for this, and it's like, you know, you can't tell us who's right and who's wrong. You can't tell us what the law is. And I'm just saying, you know, you know what? I mean, you've got to listen to all those. You know, I should, I should hope you've got a fair bit of knowledge of this because I think you may have some pretty interesting cases that you can bring forward. And I think that, you know, maybe you should start emailing some of those people out and saying, hey, how is this? So, you know, and that's just, that's just, just what he did. You know, several times we, we, we had a kind of a scuffle. But, yeah, so, you know, it's just a small thing. Right, and, and I think that, and I think we have so many people that are, that are just really pushed up and, and you know, that really are not getting out of this, you know, kind of denial of this issue. But, but you know, it, it is, you know, several of them have been raised and they just come out and they come out and say they're not real comfortable. You know, it's interesting. That you do. Yeah. To be honest, it's not my favorite thing. That's okay. That's okay. That's all right. It's no big deal. We get nervous because we right. covered our worst. We realized we weren't doing no, no, that, but we no. were like, okay, we well, got to draw a line because then we'll have that. I have to we'll say, the that. first meeting I covered this, like, you know, I was like, you know, that's a concern nowadays, unfortunately, you know, yeah. and, uh, but, uh, so I appreciate you know, it. so uh, it's going to be a bigger table, 
you know, that's right. wait, wait till you have 13. Who's that on the habit? Yeah. Congratulations on a wonderful Thank job you. evaluation. Thank you. May I get a nice picture of you, if you mind? Sure. Um, oh, this works out perfectly. It's up to the chair. It's perfectly fine. Nice, nice photo. Paul doesn't mind. I don't, doesn't mind. Get I don't mind. Here. Otherwise, you're going to slice it out of some other photo. Jim Russell, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, thank you. All right, so are we ready to rejoin our agenda the place where we're at so next up is the uh, recreational marijuana town review team mr bachman i think you want to introduce this for Thank us you, mr a chair bit. there's a memo in your packet uh as you know uh, you've asked that we expedite or not expedite but keep moving forward on how we're going to manage the recreational marijuana uh, requests uh, we came up with a process that was going to involve multiple aspects of town government one of those um, aspects is to have a, in, before we sign a host community agreement, uh, one of those um, processes is to have a town review team uh, who would review applications for recreational marijuana um, uh, approval. And on that review team, we'd be headed up by the economic development director. We would have the health director, the police chief, the planning director, and hopefully one member, if you were in agreement, uh, from the select board or a designee by the chair of the select board or someone who could serve on that five-person committee. That group would also um, be meeting with multiple other officials and, and uh, groups in town, including the um, building commissioner, the fire chief, the sustainability co coordinator, human rights director, uh, select board or town council, board of license commissioners, if it's at that point, board of health, regional school committee, uh, things like uh, groups like that and there could be others as well depending on, on the application we have put out a request to see if there is interest we don't think this is a one-time request for interest but we thought we would do it sequentially we have expressions of interest by six different um, groups for uh, existing medical marijuana or uh, people who have already established themselves that they're interested in, in uh, uh, selling medical marijuana and then two other um, uh, firms that are interested in locating downtown so uh, tonight what the request is for if the if there's a select board member if the chair would like to designate someone or if you want to pick someone else to serve on this group I think it's important for someone from the public uh, to be part of our in this this town review team Ms. Kruger please before we get into specifically uh, a representative from this board or it's a designee. Um, I just had one question on the list, and I um, it, um, there's there's a hundred different ways to, to formulate um, which staff are on and which are consulted. But I did wonder um, the planning director is listed, but not the building commissioner. And I know from the working group, the building commissioner has been very involved. And I going forward, whatever the, the stage that we're going into, where we we're, we're not doing the zoning and that kind of planning work, might it make more sense to have um, the building commissioner instead of the planning director? And I'm just asking that as an open sure. question. Um, so we, we considered that and felt that the planning director had a, a more of an overall view of the town, whereas the building commissioner is going to have to be part of the decision-making process no matter what, uh, because that the mm -hmm. firm is going to have to be um, Get going getting their, their 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 permits and as you know they work very closely yeah. together and we just didn't we felt like I, wa I wanted this to be not a giant committee um and just have but, it be I wasn't and, suggesting both I just yeah you know having reviewed it like last night and I yeah. was like just curious okay sure. so along the lines of more comments until we get to the main topic at hand <laughs> um I would have suggested both, but I do understand the, the concern about size because it has been very useful to our internal working group when both of them have been able to be there because there have been questions that the planning director hasn't been able to answer in terms of practically speaking how some things will be applied because that's not her area. That's not what she's supposed to know. And so, um, but given the close relationships people have within town hall professionally, it, it doesn't sound like it'll be a problem. And if it was, you'd put them on the committee. Or we can invite them right. into the meeting. Yeah. Right, exactly. And so um, just not 
but but keeping a smaller team I can understand I actually had wanted to ask and then you answered some of the questions already associated with whether or not we had been following the timeline that had previously been the last thing that was published to us which we don't have another copy of tonight because we try not to kill that many trees but um, in terms of those expressions of interest so we're still following that timeline and we're still hoping to be able to once this team is formed, to be able to say that they will start looking at it. So we're still on right. track. Right, we promised certain dates that we would be looking we're at things. We're still on track yes. with other dates. Excellent, that is really important. We've been hearing a little bit about it that out in the community. So um, really appreciate that on track for dates. And the other thing I just wanted to ask you to clarify that was just my not listening carefully enough associated with the responses you'd had so far. I believe the number six was raised and I believe you indicated that some were Tell me where the medical fits into that co to that comma. I um, mix that. So I haven't looked. I haven't looked at any of it. This is just um, uh, verbally by the economic economic development director. Right. The four people, the four firms who had expressed interest in medical mm -hmm. marijuana that we already have that have the sites. They have all said we want to do recreational. Okay. But with the understanding for the public, of course, again that only one is actually anywhere close to selling providing medical marijuana, that one's actually doing it, but the other three are all in various stages of the process of being able to someday sell medical marijuana right. and are therefore also potentially interested in recreational and then may or may not ever sell medical just because there's so many variations on how these things can work. Okay, great. And so we're on the timeline and we're from that. And then the other thing I was going to say before we got further into discussion about which select board member, um, I may have misinterpreted this but to say that someone from the public on there I believe there needs to be an elected official on there I think that's critically important especially since you have two elected officials in this room right now who know more than anyone else on the street in the town of Amherst than staff who've been working on this other than staff that's what I mean other than staff who've been working on this and the two of us and perhaps a couple of actual providers who've worked in other communities I think that we have a great deal of expertise on this so I would not want to give up this appointment to while we might in some cases say well you know actually so and so is really good at this and could talk about wetlands um, or something but isn't on the planning board or conservation commission right now this is not something I'd want to give up associated with that because I think one it's important for it to be an elected official and two given that it turns out a couple of elected officials actually understand it I think that's really important so I would hope that we would we would look at it that way I certainly was um, in conversations I had I fully expected that Given the expertise that's been built by virtue of yourself and Ms. Kruger, you know, but also just the five of us generally have been more in the in the weeds on this or in the <laughs> You had to do there. <laughs> Unintentionally, it was an unintended pun, but evidently I made it anyway. Um, but that we're much more familiar with the the, yeah. the nuance of it and, and the interface. I think one of the things that we as elected officials bring to the conversation is that uh, you know sort of uh, community and, and political lens uh, that's essential to, um, I think anyway, essential to the decision-making process. And so um, I was certainly thinking in terms of one of the five of us, most likely. Mr. Bachman. So I did not want to presuppose that a member of the board would want to serve or you would feel obligated to serve on it or if someone wasn't on the board in the future couldn't serve in it. So I, that's why I felt it was a designated spot for the select board to say this is who we want to, to represent us at this moment in time. Ms. Brewer. I'll try my pun. Um, I have uh, spoken to Ms. Brewer and I don't want to deprive anyone, but I would take the hit. <laughs> yes, you went there? <laughs> okay, and it's not even nine o'clock. Along those lines, um, would you please, I, I mean, I know there are thousands of these things you're thinking at, and some of them, perhaps, it's just what's right in front of you right now, which is not a bad thing. I'm not criticizing, but what I'm saying is, as the select board moves off into the sunset in a matter of weeks, and fortunately is still available to do this um, particular task, what would be your thought as to who would be the next person in that sort of slot? Would that be somebody from the appointed Board of License Commissioners, or would that be a counselor, do you think? I would, that's a really good question. I, I, would, I, I assumed it would be from the council 
again, go to the council president and say, would you designate someone to fulfill this function? However, that person or the council chose, chose to do it. Um, I think the Board of Licensing Commission, I think I'd rather be at the, um, at the council level for this because for a lot of different reasons. Just kind of on logistics as well. Um, maybe it, I'm wondering, I know we're, you know, in our sunset years here, um, months. Weeks, weeks. It's not weeks, it's still months. It's weeks. No, we go until December 2nd or whatever that is. Um, I'm wondering in terms of the transition, like how long, well, it is, but it's going to end, but would it end at the end of, of would it end on December 2nd, or would there be an overlap until the council grapples with how they want it? I mean, I, it, it can go either way, but I just might this overlap. So again, I, I didn't say it had to be an elected official. I said it mm -hmm. could be anybody that, that right. So it could be that if the chair, chair does, <laughs> designates or whoever, however you guys yeah. decide you want to do that. Um, and this, I see this as being a sequential thing. So as we said, it's an iterative process that we begin. We're going to look at these, and then in yeah. six months we said yeah. we'd come back and look so, at it again, and then we'll see it. Maybe this is the wrong group of people. Maybe the building commissioner should be on, not right. the planet. Whatever it is that we come so up with. This is kind of this first. Let's round try it out. We'll... We said we want to walk before right. we start to run. So along those lines, given that we are on track and that we can, time-wise, and that we can get um, through this set of applications, and then as you'd outlined previously and as you just indicated now, that there would be another set uh, at a future time, largely dependent on how many came out of the first set, um, there isn't as much pressure on that transitional right. period right. as there would be for something like, it's oh, I don't know, daily liquor licenses <laughs> that somebody's going to have to sign. It's first batch um, that are ready now. I get yeah, it. and so that's helpful. And so in that case, I would uh, very much like to see Ms. Kruger perform this task since she already has indicated that she'd be willing to do so. And normally those watching at home might expect us to arm wrestle over this particular issue because we so enjoy this, but um, I just think timing wise it would work it would work best if she was able to do that especially given that hopefully it'll be this limited time period and then um, perhaps be called back in uh, during a transitional period but um, not needed but I'm excited that we are moving along as we'd hoped associated with timing Mr. Wald any comments no if that's the case you would sure you, you didn't want it Mr. Wald <laughs> you sure. can have it even if you want it <laughs> would you like to make a motion I would, is that this what is we're calling e. it? The town, marijuana town, are there shirts? The marijuana town review team. The internal <laughs> working the town, group never really got that far. We didn't get hats or anything. Town review team. Town, wouldn't it be the town marijuana review team? Unless we're rebranding ourselves as marijuana town. Which, <laughs> <don't think> we <laughs> want to do. which might have some potential. How about, just, can, how about we say the mar how can we just say the t marijuana review team? Yeah, I see. Take the word town out for now. Okay. Would that be all right? Because you wouldn't put people who aren't in the town on a review team about this. It, I mean, we're not including the campus and community well, coalition it's a set of any. Membership, you can't apply. Or, you can't apply for it. So right. just be a marijuana. Right. Oh. <laughs> Amherst, Amherst marijuana review team. I'm going to be looking for logos tonight <laughs> on Google at two in the morning. I move to appoint select board member Connie Kruger to the marijuana review team. Marijuana review team. <laughs> Is there a second? Varsity all-star team. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Wait, but instead of a star, you get the leaf. Oh, man. Uh, is there further Getting discussion? Me. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous with one absent. Thank you thank for you. doing that. And thank you, Ms. Gruber, for offering to do that. Thank you to staff for all the additional time. They're doing a whole set of new economic development issues that were not on anybody's plate a couple years ago. So right. that's awesome. So next on our agenda is charge transition. Any updates that you want to share with us and, and uh, topics for future council are two areas there. Is there anything you want to share relative mm -hmm. to? So we are, uh, we have not had, we have agenda setting tomorrow, um, but we are looking at September 17th for a pretty thorough update on charter transition. The bylaw review committee is, that's the one day that they can all make, uh, or at least two of them can make. And so they will be wanting to show you the work that they have done so far. 
um, show you um, gen in general terms. They want to show you that, how they've set things up, make sure they're, they're a body that you've created, so it's important for them to come back and check in with you, so make sure they're on the right track. Um, the, Bob Ritchie, a, f a former town council, is the chair of that committee, is doing a tremendous work, and again, Jeff Kravitz has been staffing that, and, and he deserves a ton of credit for uh, the detailed work that they have done. Uh, Mr. Ritchie is doing some, has done this multiple times. He's working in this, the town of Falmouth right now doing very similar work. So it's, it's, we're really fortunate to have him uh, leading this. And uh, they're going to be talking to you about some of the conventions that they want to apply. Um, you know, just you'll, you'll appreciate them because you are detail-oriented people about the wordsmith wordsmithing and word choices they're using in, ter as, in trying to say this is the convention we're applying to the bylaws. We'd like them applied to everything in terms of the rules and regulations and everything. So in terms of how they uh, phrase certain things. So it, you'll, I think you'll enjoy that, and it'll, it'll be important to get, for them to get some feedback. And just make sure they have gone through pretty much all of the general bylaws they have scanned the zoning bylaws. Not a lot of work for them to do on, this, on the zoning bylaws in terms of uh, select board role and things like that. But they're um, they're also at the same time gathering and as 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 the planning board gathering ideas for other things that the council should take under in, into consideration. So they've got a, a list of things that the council should vote on instantaneously, and then some things for them to take into consideration, put on their work plan for things to consider. Uh, both general bylaws and um, zoning bylaws and things like that. And they are scheduled to meet with our town attorney on Friday, I believe it is, uh, to go through what they've done and to see if, there's, if they're in sync with what, what Ms. Goldberg is thinking about. So, um, but that, I, you know, as we start to build your meetings going forward, <coughs> they're gonna be heavier and heavier agendas. Um, tonight's actually a relatively light agenda. Um, but the next few, the next series of meetings will be have a lot on them. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? I think under topics for futures council, it's I think that one's going to advance when I have an opportunity to advance it a little bit. I, I have some ideas. We've had conversations about how we structure that work a little bit, and <clears throat> it's really the balls in my court to to uh, to take some action and pr present a frame to everybody to to work from on that and and. Uh, Let's just say late August and early September are quite busy, and so I I'm haven't gotten to it. Would you like to pick a deadline for yourself, Mr. <laughs> I think he's done that. I think yeah, he I did. Blew I, past I, I, now he feels <laughs> bad. Pick <Right. So. laughs> another deadline. No, I think that that's. It's entirely likely that it was probably supposed to be this meeting or the next one, but um, let's say September, which means by the 17th at the latest, I would have to have it figured out. But hopefully, we'll get there. Might go well with that other topic. That <laughs> so yes please on the plus side the longer you wait to give us the tool the more likely we are to say it's good enough we'll do this <laughs> Ooh, sure Let, let's get going right. <laughs> we won't have to wordsmith it right. so much and say oh well, what about a google doc that does xyz yeah. yeah you can make it simpler i actually did have another item if we are still under topics for please. future council i don't know if i'm just saying this into the air because i don't know how we're keeping track of these things but um, you do I'm record these leaving. meetings so i'm counting yeah. on that to help me <laughs> Oh, right, because you're going to sit down and watch all the me. Uh-huh, right. Okay, no. So somebody, maybe we'll know, is that one of the things that I think would be very useful to the future council, because it would be useful to me, is as a select board member, is that when we have things like the first look update, we need to figure out a way to do a couple of things. One is to have a heads up that say, the slide deck is on the website, which I sort of remembered from having been there, but we don't know that. And I know that this is extremely difficult because of open meeting law, and you can't express an opinion unless we have staff do it, and then it's one more thing in the thousands of pieces of paper here. But we need to figure out a way to give people, and this is true for every single committee as well as the select board, give people a heads up about the things they're gonna be talking about. So if the slide deck's available, great. Given that we had two agendas for the May and the August forums, we could have included those in the packet, for example. So someone new to the topic, and so this is much more important for the council at this point than it is for us, because we all know. We all know one or another of us has been to that. When there's 13 people sitting there, 
odds are actually that not all of them are going to everything. So for them to get, it, if it's an electronic packet, I mean, this is just part of their future planning, but for staff to be thinking about what you want to propose to them <laughs> rather than ask, letting the town council tell you what they want. Um, to start off with maybe a proposal of, okay, well, I'm not asking Mr. Zomak to go back and come up with four years of all the outreach meetings that have been done all over the common because there has been a very long period of time. But the two recent ones with Weston and Samson were in May and people could have seen those actual agendas. They wouldn't necessarily want to get the whole slide deck printed out, but they could have said, and then go look at this. Just to give sort of everybody the same starting point with that in case they hadn't been to the meeting or in case they'd forgotten or something along that, those lines. So in terms of just structurally for staff to be thinking about when you don't have either an experienced CONCOM or planning board or select board that kind of knows all these things that have been working on to be thinking about how to bring people up to speed before they show up at a meeting, I think would be really helpful. So I think, and I think it was my responsibility to have sent you the slide deck from that meeting from last week. And I think I said, had said that to Angela and I didn't do it versus in putting it in the packet. I said, well, why don't I send it out independently and so they have it separately. So I think that's, exactly. it's, it's, we had thought about it, but I think we just missed that one. Yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, it, it's just an example of structurally, like, I don't know what you'd call that, but like some kind of memo that says, you know, item 4E, there isn't anything, but go look online because right. there's this huge website that's written all about it. Right. And then you'll know what we're talking about when we get and there. The way I've sort of phrased it to myself is how to construct materials mm -hmm. for a packet. What's the process? Is there a sort of things to th do and think about as you consider any particular topic and what, what to include in the packet, what not to include, what is the range of things that sort of encapsulate a given area to help, you know, the new counselors, you know, sort of be prepared for their meeting properly and and so how right. do that and that's we've talked that. about that internally we've talked about going to an electronic packet where there'd be hyperlinks so there's no mm -hmm. issue with someone trying to figure it out and so it's just boom, mm -hmm. boom, right. 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 i mean that, that's a good point i suppose it's you know information sheet because if you think to back to some of the town meetings you know planning board would often do this here's the history of discussion about the north common or something just a one-page timeline with references and so forth and that that might solve the job but obviously electronic would be the best if we could have it linked Other things we want to mention while we have the moment and we're thinking of it. If not, then I'll move on to the town manager performance evaluation. We actually have to take the formal votes in an open public session of the things we had uh, come to agreement on in our executive session and through our public process of evaluating the manager. And so there are a couple of, uh, I think there's a single motion perhaps um, that we need to formally uh, adopt for the purposes of uh, finishing the, the evaluation. Would you like the motion and then we can discuss? Or are you, are Either you or. I, I'm, so why don't you do that? We'll, we'll start with the motion and we'll go from there. Sort of, you know, maybe recap a little for people what we've already done. Right. Um, I move to amend the town manager's contract to include a 2% cost of living increase in the value of a 3% step raise as provided to other eligible non-union employees, both to be effective August 22nd, 2018. And so there's a second. So we're open for discussion. So if people want to want to paint that picture, or should I? Feel free, Ms. Brewer. So note to future town council, <laughs> well, you want to go right back to that page? So there needed to be something in the packet. And th that beyond the motion, there, I mean. I think, we, well, we did have something in, the, in, our, fold, in our folder. Uh, I don't have anything. The evaluation. I think, was that in our folder? Uh, not in ours. I think that's because of a previous meeting, maybe. Oh, you have. when you were gone. Oh, yeah. I know. I sat in Andy's seat and it says Andy. So I, this was Andy's so, yellow folder. And I took it from in last time. Yeah. So, so, it was right. right. Last so meeting. what I'm trying to say is, Sorry. so the public, right, is Go looking ahead. at this and saying, so let's see if I notice that it says town manager performance yep. evaluation uh -huh. there. Huh. There's nothing in their packet about the evaluation. There's no copy of the press release they sent out last week. Right. I have no idea what they're talking about beyond evaluation. So yeah, we're, we're compliant with open meeting law, but not really the spirit of what we're trying to accomplish. And so it would be great. It would have been great to have in the packet, you know, maybe the end of the timeline to see if we needed to 
to revise anything for future, but mm -hmm. of course we're kind of done, so who cares? And but the press release itself that right. went out to show this is the thing we sent, and it does say about how we're going to vote. Right. And then that would kind of refresh our right. mind, particularly if there was, if it was a more complex right. situation right. than it is. And I think we could potentially add that to the packet since yeah. we right. mentioned it, because that is a, that that press release is captures that pretty well, and it's an oversight on my part. Well, I, I think it's a, it's a point well taken. I'm, but I'm I'm thinking back to our last item, if we went to um, an electronic packet, then it's less of a burden because then clearly those all, if someone really wanted to look, that would all be listed there. So it gets less burdensome if we do transition to the all electronic. Um, but here we're, we're sort of going by memory and we, we immersed ourselves in this issue over the summer so it's not a big deal but for someone who's trying to follow or you know it might be a new council candidate who's trying to get up to speed and they're watching and um, yeah where, where, are the, where are the documents I get that um, and it was Mr. <laughs> Steinberg's folder had it in there right. so but yeah I got it so previous meeting. okay back on page is there further discussion I'm well, were you going to do a recap? We are. Of, like, yeah, so I can do that, or yeah. Yeah. someone else Go would ahead. like to. Go for it. So we reviewed the manager over a, over the summer, quite frankly, because we started collecting information from from uh, from the public, <clears throat> boards and committees, town meeting members, uh, staff. Uh, from June into July, we all got an opportunity to see that. We did our own evaluation through. Uh, uh, a form that we created relative to our goals that we set for the manager last year. Um, those were all due to me by the 6th of August. I then took them and created a composite, which we reviewed on the, I want to say, 21st of August, but I could be slightly mistaken. 20th, was it Monday the 20th? And then, uh, so we reviewed that. Uh, some couple of edits were suggested. I made those, and we met the morning of the 24th and went into executive session to discuss with the manager regarding his, his contract. Um, came to an agreement in that at that time, we released a press release that indicated the results of that. But now that we're here in open session again, we can have a formal vote to uh, actually amend the contract relative to those conversations and discussions and negotiations. So does that capture everything? Did I miss anything? So no, I think that's the summary. That's the Cliff Notes version. Yep, that's fine. And so that sort of paints the picture. Is there anything else anyone wanted to mention regarding that? <clears throat> if not, then I would uh, ask all those in favor to please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous with one member absent. Thank you for your work for the town, by the way. <laughs> and I'd like to thank the board and like to thank the town. It's an honor to work for the town, and I really appreciate and enjoy working with the people I work with and with you, and you've shown great leadership for the town. So just thank you. Fantastic. Moving on. Um, so next we'll go back into our uh, Section 7 of our agenda which has our consent calendar and we have one other common victual license for the kind grind doing business as share coffee roasters um, so I think why don't we take up the 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 non-consent calendar item the common victual license for the kind grind incorporated doing business as share coffee roasters uh, change to their license to Monday through Sunday from 7 a.m. to 11:30 p.m. Uh, which is related to a modification of their operating hours. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with us relative to this, Mr. Bachmann? No, this just uh, brings into compliance their, their two licenses, the liquor license and their common victor's license. Okay. And also matches the zoning in that property, right? Or the, the yes, uh, special permit yeah. or something yeah. of that, I believe. So somewhere on our sheet on the back near the top is the motion for that if Ms. Kerner, I move please. to approve the revised hours of the common victualler license for the kind grind Inc doing business as share coffee roasters Monday through Sunday 7 a.m. to 11:30 p.m. Second. so we have a motion and a second is there further discussion Ms. Brewer just add the manager's name no oh. looks like it's Marissa with two S's Smith according to the manager yeah. Marissa Smith. They don't have to be here to be or, memorialized. Right. Or should it, or Marissa Smith, comma manager? Either way, take your pick. 
whatever suits our usual style. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous with one member absent. And so we have a consent calendar Quite a with long lots one. of things yeah, on it. So long. I think the first question is just, are there, are there any items on that consent calendar we want to pull out for um, individual consideration or, or, our, or can we consent to our consent calendar? <laughs> I consent. I want to give, I mean, there's 16 items. I don't, there's nothing there for me. So. Was that about an electronic packet? It, it was <laughs> legit. And it, oh, no, I know it's here. It's just, to you can't I was it. just saying, she shuffled wouldn't it be lovely if we had an electronic, electronic packet? packet. Right. Because then I would just say, shoo, 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 and there it would be. Right. <laughs> Rather than the shuffling around. And it, it was just in front of me moments ago. Um, right because I wasn't going to check all those dates. I remember that. I remember that quite well. So if there's not any you know, particular item that should be pulled out, then if someone would like to make the motion relative to the consent calendar at the very bottom of the page for motions to the top of the second page. So it starts at the I can do very that. bottom. Um, I move to approve the items listed in the consent calendar for the September 5th, 2018 agenda as, wait for it, Presented. Presented. <laughs> is there a second? There's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. No opposed. So that would be unanimous with one member absent. And so I believe that takes us to, would we like to do minutes or would we like to do reports of members and the, the manager? Should we do minutes first? There are two sets of minutes that were included. Problem. February 1st, Here. 2016, and February 8th, 2016? Yeah. Working on it. I don't remember after breakfast, so this is like. So, I believe these have been reviewed by Mr. Steinberg. Yes, they have And uh, the manager, et cetera, et cetera. So, I would entertain a motion for those as well. I'm on a roll, I'll try that. I move to approve the minutes from the select board meetings on February 1st, 2016, and February 8th, 2016 as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Opposed. So we have a three to one abstaining and one absent vote. Let's talk about that. I believe that still gets us Mm -hmm. Yep. Where we need to on those. And I'm make it over. All right. So at this point, Ms. Bachman, would you like to share yes. your report with us? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you have a written report in your packet uh, with some updates. I'm going to highlight a handful of them, and then you can, if there are things that you want to bring up that are either on this report or not, happy to address them. Um, next uh, cup of joe is going to be Friday, September 14th at the Share Roasters Coffee on North Pleasant Street, which is a new location of Share. Um, we'll be, I'll be with uh, Police Chief Scott Livingstone on, and um, thinking that this is a timely, uh, good time for him to be with me as we start the school year. People may have questions about uh, students and or you know issues that come up in uh, typically at this time of year. Um, uh, I'll be just want to mention that I'll be speaking at the Rotary Club tomorrow. Um, th in terms of the downtown business improvement district, uh, there have been two wayfinding signs that have been installed uh, by the business improvement district in the Triangle Street roundabout, and um, they is in generally positive. There were some uh, comments on it. I think the the intent is good. We're, we're still as we are using this as an example, uh, as a um, test case for when we have the other signs that are installed. We're noticing the color wasn't exactly as we seemed to see in our, our um, original renderings. We've talked with the designer and uh, are making sure the specs were complied with, things like, things like that. But I think that the look and the feel of it, the, the um, everything but the color has been, been pretty 
uh, received in a positive After way. All those art hours of arguing over the color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it well, seemed, they seem it reads a little bit differently. And you know, when we looked at them inside, it looked like the color that. Well, I'm colorblind, so I really should not be commenting on <laughs> what other people say were the right color. So, so I think my comment would be that the contrast between the colors is not as great as I thought mm -hmm. it was going to be, and mm -hmm. therefore right. it makes it harder to sort of pick up the, the more subtle aspects so of the it. signage. Mm -hmm. And that's really mm -hmm. the, the actual colors themselves I have no problems yeah. with. It's just the contrast between mm -hmm. certain. And the difference between in the field. Right. And in the yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did one, and we can check it out, and we can make adjustments. I mean, really, these signs are really designed to do one thing, which is to say downtown is this way. And I think they accomplished that. I mean, the design could be adjusted. That part's fairly clear where it says it's in white with the mm -hmm. little mm -hmm. arrow around the circle. But yes, Ms. Brewer. Just, Ms. Brewer. just you know, belaboring a little bit. <laughs> Off orange was a really interesting way of describing it. Not a color in the Crayola book, not the color we asked for, and certainly not a color that represents anything Amherst-like than any of us thought of. We have really no idea where that color came from. But when you're very close up to it, it actually looks very beautiful, and as well as saying, go that way, <laughs> which is the important thing. But I'm not really sure the purpose of it looking that beautiful close up when you're driving around in a roundabout or riding your electric assist bike around in a hurry. So I don't know if maybe there is some contrast type, I mean, aside from the oddness of the color, a contrast issue that could perhaps be addressed before we manufactured the next set that right. might be worth mm -hmm. doing, even though it's pretty. Since we're all doing it, because we drove by there when I first saw them a few days ago and thought, oh, they got this temporary wooden thing up there. It looks like, because <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not what we ask for. And you know, the other thing, again, I think you're right about the contrast. So it's got this italic welcome and it's got the Amherst coat of arms, shield, whatever you want to call it. You can't see them unless you're right up against there or driving very slowly, so that's strange. And as Ms. Kruger said, we spent an awful lot of time on that. I mean, that said, I know when we were doing the Amherst flag with Ms. Stein and I, we were down at the flag, you know, trying to get the Pantone colors matched up and see how it looks on fabric and sunlight is often very different mm -hmm. than what we, we think. But I think it is important to get that right because Otherwise, it just be, looks, you know, looks muddy if you're supposed to have subtle detail and it's not showing up. But you just see the glaring yellowish Amherst letters on a, what is it, off orange, they call it? Yes, it's, it's critical to the intent of the sign program. Yeah, right. and I like Court and Steel and all that, so I mean, I understand what's involved with that, but if it's our issue, we should resolve it. Um, and speaking of the bid, the bid is um, up for renewal. Uh, I've received the material to approve the renewal, and my intention is to vote to uh, as a member uh, to uh, vote for the renewal. Uh, those packets have gone out to all the members. The, the um, deadline for the renewal, I think, is in October sometime, but there is a meeting this week with the bid board to talk about the progress that's being made to, to um, collect the votes and see how, how we're doing on that. Um, in your, uh, attached to the, my report was a letter from the Attorney General that had approval for articles 30, 11 and 35, I put 45 in my report, um, and there was some very specific language that the Attorney General had mentioned about uh, Article 11, which is the establishment of the after-school program revolving fund, which we have forwarded to um, the school and the um, town finance officers. Um, we talked somewhat about the charter implementation. Um, let's see if there's anything new on that. No, so I've, already talk, I've already updated you on that. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, the town clerk. Um, we had the election yesterday. Uh, the town clerk and her staff um, did, a tr well, first congratulations to everyone who ran, and everybody's a winner, and uh, we we're, we're appreciate that. Um, but no, actually, I think it, 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 people who take the risk of putting their name in front of a lot of other people and saying, vote for me, I just really think that, that people deserve credit for doing that and being brave about it. Um, there is a, uh, the new town clerk was assisted by our former town clerk, Sandra Burgess, who, who stepped in and uh, righted some things that were not really going right at the time. It was a very com complicated election with write-in candidates, two elections going on simultaneously the day after Labor Day. It was really hot, a lot of uh, things to contend with, and uh, our town clerk just worked endless hours over the weekend. Uh, and. Uh, from 5 a.m. till I think 1 a.m. that night, trying to get the information out on into the public in terms of what happened at the election. Um, 
staff stepped up. Uh, Ms. Mills went up and rescued a situation in one of the polling places um, where things were starting to not work at the end of the day because people were really fried, I think, because they were in hot locations. And uh, we brought, you know, people stepped up. We had employees who would run home and get a half a dozen fans that we could put in places because we didn't have fans. So everybody was chipping in, trying to help as best as best we could. Uh, and it turned out to be um, a relatively well-run election. Uh, there was one complaint that arose, which was that um, the felt pens that were in the polling locations, you, it was hard to write the names. So. There was a complaint filed with the Secretary of State's office. The Secretary of State called the town clerk, and she instantaneously got boxes of ballpoint pens mm -hmm. out to every polling location. Um, and you know those were good, good things to catch. And it's something that also you know we're making. We're going to have a debrief session with key warden, mem key wardens from the, the precincts. And also, there's some information we want to give back to the Secretary of State's. When you have write in, you know, mm -hmm. put this on your checklist have ballpoint pens there. We need to know that when if there's going to be a, a consistent um, write-in campaign. Um, it, it caused for a, a late count because all those ballots had to be hand counted. Um, and many people were out till midnight just hand counting hundreds and hundreds of ballots. Um, but I think the results are unofficial and they will be unofficial until she really is able to get a handle on it. But again, uh, DPW did the setup. Uh, there were issues that rose at the schools, and you will probably hear more about issues at the schools. I think this might may be a topic for the school that the school committee will ri raise. Um, some candidates and um, people supporting candidates were sitting, <coughs> were standing uh, closer than we normally are at the schools, and that gave concern to the schools in the sense that wherever the voting location was. They may have been 150 feet away, but typically people are at the entrance to the driveways. And um, it, the school was concerned about having people holding signs near where children were going to be dismissed. And so I've talked with the superintendent, I talked with him probably five times on, on Tuesday as we were trying to address some of these issues. And some of them were, were fixable and the town clerk was very willing to work with him on these issues. Um, it won't be an issue come November because there is no school on the, at the November election, which is good news. But it will speak to, and this is something the town clerk had raised to me uh, as soon as she took office about our polling locations need some serious attention. Um, there's some uh, that are just really hard to park at and get to. She would like to reduce the number of polling locations to some people have suggested five to match up with our five districts. Um, the schools would like us out of their buildings if at all possible because of the disruption that it causes for them. And, that, and also there's a heightened level of uh, worry about security. Um, Crocker Farm is a big issue. That was a, something that we really appreciate the schools working with us on because it was the first day of pre-K, it was the first day of kindergarten. We had extra police officers there, but we also had a lot of people at the entrance who were taking up a lot of parking spaces. So. Uh, the principal was out there, at, I was with him at seven o'clock in the morning trying to manage people around, could you move your car to, so when people came to drop off their kids, there was a place to put your car. Um, so he understood, he, he was sort of working through it, but wishing it hadn't happened basically. Um, so there's, there's, but we knew that was gonna happen because they had alerted us to that and we couldn't, we couldn't find an alternate location for that polling location that was gonna be suitable to that, to that precinct. Um, but I think, you know, our, the town clerk is very energized to say um, just a lot of communities um, have uh, one polling location for the entire community. They mm. take over uh, a gym or a public building and all 10 precincts go into this one location. Mm. These issues, a lot of issues are addressed much more effectively because if there weren't ballpoint pens, we'd have them out there in about two minutes instead of running, you know, taking an hour to drive around to all the to various locations. Um, but all in all, uh, uh, a tremendous amount of work by by a lot of people and um, just I, I was really struck by the number of people who are they're really volunteering they get paid a little bit but they're really volunteering and uh, participating in the de democratic process it was, it was pretty it was great to see all the vol the people who had to work that day to make this election happen uh, just a tremendous organizing tool it, um, it, it just was a ta an organizing task so Credit to our brand new town clerk who came in, made it happen. Support from our pr prior town clerk who really um, 
you know, was called in on like a SWAT team to come and <laughs> fix situations. And she, uh, according to Ms. Mills, came in and like put, made everything right within five minutes. Um, so it was really exciting to, that people were willing to do the work. So if I could follow up yeah, on yeah, polling locations while we're on this hot topic. Yeah. So um, one of, the, I really am excited to hear that she's considering consolidating um, polling places, which obviously won't be our decision because it's not going to happen anytime soon. But, um, and it is terrific that we don't have to worry about it so much for the November 6th election. But I do think it is really important. And I think that we've shown that the Bang Center can, can tolerate three precincts and parking be is manageable, not necessarily ideal, but manageable. Whereas I would argue that parking is completely and the entire location is completely inappropriate in Precinct 1. At the North, what has always been the North Congregational Church, there are two parking spaces, one handicap space, or a long hill, which a huge number of people who would not need handicap permits cannot tolerate in the heat, or with a stroller, or with a cane. It's just, it makes no sense. It's really nice when you go in, because <laughs> there's a ramp in, but you can't get there is the problem. And so the obvious, um, consideration there would be to run two precincts at Emanuel, which has in fact been done at one point, I think, when there was a problem at one of the other locations. So I really appreciate that she's able to take a fresh look and say, okay, well, given the experience of the poll workers and the wardens on parking, you know, then how does that really play out? And maybe this also becomes one of the places that one of the, uni the university or the colleges could step up and say, this thing that happens twice a year because we won't have separate spring elections anymore generally unless we have special elections, um, will help you, right? There's some major location that they could obtain parking and it would be a celebration of their partnership with us. I think that along those lines of the schools and that difficulty, right, of people who haven't necessarily previously been engaged in campaigns, knowing that it's the 150 feet, but yet it's a school property, but yet they don't want you on school property if you don't belong there, which is totally reasonable. That brings back the idea that comes up all the time, which is a map. A map of wherever, now if we change all the polling locations, then it's out of date, but a map that says you can stand here, but not over here. You can put signs in here, nope, that's the common. You're not gonna put signs. I mean, somebody needs to work that out because it is just completely casual every time. People are very frustrated and they don't know what they're allowed to do and what not to do, and particularly for the schools. I think if we just had been able to, if we'd foreseen it, which we didn't, but we could have told people ahead of time, nope, not gonna happen, and do what eventually had to be done to make that happen. But I think we just, it's just that people don't know any better. And so we just need to figure out a way to proactively explain that to people so that they know where they're allowed to be. Because we've even had different interpretations at the same polling location by different constables as to where you're allowed to be and if you're allowed to hold signs or put signs in the yard and all that good stuff. So we don't want to be accused of depressing voter engagement, but at the same time, we just need to come up with some rules so people know what the heck is going on. Ms. Gruber. I, yeah, I don't think we can solve it now, but just to highlight that that's something that needs the fresh look, both the consolidation and some of these other points. But um, I get to be at um, two polling places yesterday, not because I voted twice, but my own. And then um, I was a, <laughs> not a poll worker, but a poll watcher at Crocker Farm starting um, in the, in, at like um, 2.45. So it was pretty hot in there, but I wanted to really commend the staff and the poll workers because it was an amazing effort. And um, at one point, both our former clerk and our new clerk arrived and they they were so um they were very upbeat and they were i was across the room but they were working with talking to the poll workers and they were smiling and they were sort of cheering them on and so they, it was like the troops had come in and um it, it, they, it was really wonderful i mean the whole effort but i saw the two clerks working together as a team problem solving but really encouraging people and showing leadership in what was a very complicated election probably one of the most unusual elections dates and events that we may see in 50 years so um, I think everyone who had a, a piece of it um, 
really should feel good. And I want to feel good about um, the town meeting and this board and the manager and the staff for making sure that we got the date that we said mm -hmm. we were going to have the election on. And we had it, our local election, to coincide with the state election. I, I don't know the turnout numbers. I haven't analyzed that. But I saw people coming steady stream in both of the polling places. There was a lot of interest, a lot of activity, and I think we can all feel good about sticking to our guns on that date. So, enough pontificating. <clears throat> what else? Um, oh, speaking of heat, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to thank the LSSE and the DPW for extending the hours of the Mill River pool because uh, there were days when they were scheduled to be closed, and but the school was out of session, and then when school had to close early because of the heat, and uh, Barb Bills was able to round up some lifeguards, and DPW, were, they were literally out there ready to drain the pool and said, nope, we're going to open for another day. And so they were, um, everybody was very cooperative on that. Um, and it was very, what they told me, it was very crowded, so I <coughs> really appreciate everybody jumping in, literally like the night before, you know, in this, or the Sunday morning of trying to get. Uh, jumping in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what else? The, I want to mention that speaking of LSSC, there is a, um, their new brochure is out with a very nice cover. Oh, I didn't bring it. Did I bring it? Well, you'll see it. It's everywhere. Um, yes. You should look for the cover, which features some yeah. very uh, some of our students. <laughs> um, uh, page five. I want to mention that um, we have. Um, uh, we will, uh, we've talked with, uh, every, we, as you know, we had a consultant come in and look at our first floor. We've, um, uh, I'm going to put something in a little more formal memo to you so to update you in terms of some of the changes. You, you notice that we um, have advertised for a finance director slash treasurer, and this is um, a great relief to the first floor who've been, and, and to me, because as we move forward, I've estimated that Initially, when I came in, I wanted, I thought maybe I can just do some of the finance director position, but as we um, take on these larger capital projects and really need to get into the regional school assessment and some of those things, it became really evident, um, especially with the treasurer collector out, that we needed someone who's going to look at these bigger picture things. And so that's <coughs> the purpose of the, having the finance director slash treasurer to fulfill that function. We won't be filling the treasurer collector's position. We will be filling the finance director slash treasurer position. And then the assistant collector will be raised up to be the collector um, in, for the town. Um, so this, and we've, uh, uh, this should put us in good stead for the next few years. We're out recruiting on multiple levels for the finance director position. Uh, we will also be looking to add a little additional staffing for that front counter service because when we removed the ambulance billing and we went to privatize that, that took a person out of that office who was also working at the front counter a fair amount of time. So we want to help relieve some of the pressure on the treasure collector's office because uh, they, they're finding they're not able to do their work as well because they're, so many of them have to be at the front uh, counter so much and also they're there it's a senior staff so they have a lot of vacation uh, that they've earned and so covering all these these hours so one of the things that we'll be doing is taking some of the money that we've saved on some of these other things to put it into a person who's going to help uh, address that front office that front um, window uh, challenge um, Groff Park uh, we based on a lot of information we've been receiving from other bid thing bid um, projects we've done, we're going to hold off on going out to bid for that at this point until later in the winter. What we have found from our uh, department heads who are going out to bid using the same contractors is that they're really, all the contractors are just swamped right now. We don't feel we're going to get the attention that we would <coughs> deserve in terms of making this a competitive uh, bid project. So we think if we wait until a little bit later into the uh, year, the calendar year and then put it out to bid in December or January. It'll still fit in our time frame for getting the work done in a timely manner. Um, we held off on uh, t removing the existing equipment until later in the fall till the weather really starts to turn. So if 
uh, people want to use that Groff Park space, they still will have the equipment there to use it. Um, we talked about the North Common Main Street parking lot. The Dark Dog Park received a, grant, a design grant from the Stanton Foundation, uh, which is really good news. Typically what happens, once they give you a design grant, they give you a construction grant. Uh, so we're going through procurement on the design services for the, um, for the design grant. Um, so that's, that, that keeps moving forward. Um, and I think those are the only things I wanted to highlight at this point in time. So if there are questions um, or issues that people want to raise. Yes, please. Um, questions and that don't have to be answered tonight, but could be answered next time since we're going to be meeting several times over the next few weeks. Um, under, on page four, under Department of Conservation and Development, yep. You made the mention of the notice of dangerous structures to the owner of 159 North Pleasant Street, which first had to be fenced and then had to be demolished. And we know that they didn't, the owner did not meet the timelines we originally established. And so I'd like, I appreciate that it's finally been demolished, but I would like you to let us know if any fines were applied and if not, why we chose not to, given that the timelines weren't met. Okay. The another follow up is on that same page under economic development with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the sessions that they've had and just in terms of all the many things we're working on what we're looking at in terms of a product coming out of that and what that's going to look like because I know that as a challenging situation having been to a couple of those meetings. Sure. Because I think some people might have high expectations for a report that maybe won't be able to meet those expectations. But if we just know, if we have a sense of the timeline to tell people to look mm -hmm. for it, that the ones who, particularly the ones who came to those meetings, yep. that would be great. Um, <laughs> right. Didn't we do a thing? Because we got lots of things. And speaking of timelines, at the bottom of page five on the North Amherst Library, if you want to just tell us at some point in the future what the what the expectation is in terms of the contract, et cetera, again, just so that we can tell people start looking for something around such and such time. Although I'm always happy to tell them, just call your office. That works, too. <laughs> um, <coughs> the other one is one, because we haven't had a marijuana internal working group meeting for a little while, is at the top of page five, it says the health department's reviewing regulations and I assume, so I always get a little confused about the line between the department and the Board of Health itself, but reviewing regulations to address the need to address vaping, marijuana smoking, tobacco, et cetera, because one of the things that we've been working under the assumption of so far is that the um, smoking in public places that was made clear associated with marijuana legislation that it applied to marijuana usage. Also, we made more details in our town bylaw associated with that. So whatever it is that they're concerned about, I guess I'd okay. like to know what they're concerned about because what, which things they're finding the need to fine tune or you know maybe aren't fully addressed because we tried to do that, but we realized we might not be getting everything when we were working on that. So whatever it is they're trying to do. Because, of course, the Board of Health is completely independent from that standpoint and doesn't have any obligation to tell us anything, but since we talk about marijuana here on a fairly regular basis, that would be worth knowing. I forgot to mention, um, we will be, the town clerk will be coming at a future meeting, which we'll put on the agenda to talk about sort of the results of this meeting, her experience of this election, and also preparing for early voting. I think we have that in mid-October. Uh, on the agenda, scheduled, you know, penciled in on the agenda um, to also publicize, publicize early voting that we'll be doing at UMass and, and in town hall. Yes. Which is what I wanted you to emphasize that we're going to do it yes. at UMass again. Yeah, yeah. So we can count on that happening. The town clerk was all over doing making that happen. Excellent. It's amazing. Excellent. And I appreciate UMass offering their help on that again because that did make a huge difference. It so, was stole a ton of work for our people, but it made a huge difference to have UMass help. So we did have a few students who had, who had worked as poll workers this time because of the outreach. The new president of the Student Government Association has big shoes to fill. 
Um, and one of the challenges we have at this point is whether the student union will be available to us because I know there at some point they're gonna be shutting it down. Right. And um, uh, we had done it in the spot or whatever they call that. And then we've also done it in the other hall out there. So um, we'd like to be able to use the student union again because that um, uh, it's a pretty good space and good location. Centrally located, all of that. And the more notice we give to people because, you know, as you indicated, there was this letter in the in our packet for people who can read at home for the UMass students. When I said UMass, yeah, it's great UMass, but UMass students really wanted this to happen, but it also works out great for UMass staff, so people passing through the building. But like you say, the timing on shutting down the student union is certainly part of it as well. But the Student Government Association did send out something to all the students about the election yesterday, which was kind of exciting because one of our exciting. employees is a student and received it to say, Here's, and here are the links to find out they went to our web you know, here's a link to our to the town's website you know because we have a under our election website we have college vote so they know what the, all the rules about that so that was that was excellent to see really good outreach <clears throat> is, is it under town manager's report to report back on the letters we got back <laughs> I because believe so, isn't yes. it exciting that yes. you send these things off into the void after town meeting action and eventually sometimes something comes back I, I found that quite fascinating because I don't think we've ever received anything at least since I've been on sucker I don't think we've ever we've received never been a letter copied on it if we saw such yeah, maybe a thing. so maybe we got them and we're not aware of them but but it seems worth pointing out that that there is sort of a closed loop there yeah that we received a letter from our US senator and our president of the United States very good. Mm -hmm. It's 140 characters or less. But um, I, I, I do have to say that the letter that is allegedly from the White House um, it doesn't have anything to do with what but we the article <laughs> was that we sent. So it was like, ah, this one's close enough. Send him this one. <laughs> I mean, you know how you cut and paste out of people's letters just to make it seem like it's not a form letter? Yeah, well, not so much. Something better. So that, that, that's a bit disappointing. It's like, what, that wasn't what that article said. They might have taken the actual letter off the desk to prevent a greater evil. <laughs> but thank you for, for making sure we saw that and it ended up in our packet so that the public can see what happens to Did you want to read it? No, I do not think we need to read it into the record. I don't think that's strictly <laughs> necessary. Are there other questions for the manager relative to his report? So yes. Just to follow up on back to the, the voting. I, again, I think this is the second time where the town put out, I'll call them lawn signs, but um, about there was, you know, there was an election and the date. Um, but I was wondering if we had ever thought of um, having a banner that went across, you know, in that banner spot that um, uh -oh. there was nobody using the banner rental spot and it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's obvious. And I so I don't know if someone has it, but we could reserve it for ourselves. And I think yeah. for a small amount of money, have one that says vote. And sometimes you have a little thing where you can change the numerical yeah. number or the, the big, let's use the banner spot right. to announce right. each election. That's okay. so obvious. Why didn't uh, well, anyway, there, yeah, that's give you that idea, idea for free. Gonna be mad. We take their week. <laughs> well, let's, but it's but it would be so useful. Block the one for the preceding the November. Yeah, if right. there's any we way that the, the is already, already, already reserved, that would start be great. January one. Right, but if for some reason there's a week that's there's a gap. Yeah, no one had it this week. Any other questions or comments for the manager? If not, then we can move on to member reports. Does anyone? Wish to offer some member reports. Mr. Wald is saying no. Ms. Yeah, we're all off. Oh, come on. We went to stuff. We did? Yes. Right went to the International Student Reception. Okay. Mr. Bachelman spoke at the International Student Reception. Uh, Mr. Zomek also attended. They try and let us talk very little so that the students mostly talk to each other, and we talked to the students. And it was great, as always, welcoming international students. Great event. Bye. And, um, so I appreciate that staff was able to come to that and I was able to make an appearance because I usually am able to do that one. And then um, 
I also wanted to mention the off-campus student services had their annual lunch, mostly associated with students who do things like Walk This Way and Team Positive Presence, and it's a great way to interact with them and the different uh, public safety people that they interact with associated with APD and UMPD. And there is, in fact, if you happen to be around tomorrow, there is a neighborhood resource fair from 3 to 6 p.m. on Allen Street where we'll walk this way and off-campus student life will be and the police will be there and there'll be food and it'll be, you know, interact nicely with public safety so that you have that good relationship going into situations more about party registration, which has been going so well. And they also have a new grant program through off-campus off student center, um, where which is moving too because of the uh, student <coughs> union closing for renovations. And there's a grant program where they're matching up a resident who's not a student and a student to do a project to together. So that seems like a really good idea. And so it brought some people in from the neighborhood who have not always been entirely thrilled with student behavior and trying to turn that into a, a way of positive engagement. So compliments to them for inviting the community in for that. There was also the community breakfast, was there not? Oh, right. Yes, there was that too. Speaking of to UMass, yes, with the, Yes, it was UMass that. Marching Band. That was when you were at convocation, probably, yes. for the public schools, yes. Because it's the day it's before the same day, yeah. school starts. And we had first day on the Common, which had a setup associated with the council candidates as well as state rep candidates. And, and we appreciated working with the schools on that. We borrowed some tables from Town Hall. Mr. Bachelman carried tables. It was a very huge effort. It's in the and contract, and right? It's in the contract. Right. It was in not in the contract. It's required. It's required. So that was very generous. And there will, in fact, also be a set of tables associated with council candidates at the bid block party because we're trying to establish places that people meet their counselors without having to come to the town room to do it. Right. So. Right. Mr. Walt, yeah. Just thought of an announcement because I was speaking with Mr. Mertzbach before the meeting. We came, we saw that Mary was diligently cleaning the spot on the landing there where this large wooden cabinet used to stand. You know, because we had to remove things, Mr. Buckelman explained, we had to remove artworks and things from the hallways, stairways because of fire regulations. There's also that very large wooden grain painted cabinet which some of us know held the town's weights and measures, the official ones, and that's now been given to the Historical Society, and it will be open and on display tomorrow night at the Arts Night uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. if people want to see what was inside it, because they probably walked by it for years having no idea. Right, what's in the black box, which yeah. wasn't black, but <laughs> nonetheless. So, so that's that. great to know, it, thank you. The Strong House? Or? Yeah, so right next to the Jones Library, right on Amity Street. So are there any other member reports? I, I have a small thing to report, just that uh, PVTA is um, soon to take up, actually the 19th memory services when we meet. We will make decisions regarding, uh, every three years they're required to uh, review and potentially amend their, their policies re relative to disparate impact and disproportionate impact, which one is essentially about race ethnicity kind of things, and one is about low income. Uh, there were some suggested changes that had been uh, proposed relative to how they determined whether students were low income. Uh, some community members were very active in, in uh, pushing back on that a little bit and having some concerns about what was being suggested. And as a result, uh, I received a memo from, from the staff at, at PBTA that they're going to hold off on changing it for this next three-year cycle, but they will continue to study it. I think there is some uh, you know, a nuanced approach needs to be taken that's, you know, what they have now is perhaps too simplistic in some w ways. Going to the, what they were suggesting was also in a, in the, in a different direction, perhaps too simplistic. Um, but uh, at our meeting, uh, probably in October, I'll give a full report on that particular piece. Um, and hopefully for our meeting next week, I'll have some, some materials for you guys to review relative to um, changes to bus routes which took effect over this last weekend uh, and the use of the uh, $53,000 worth of appropriation, how we might uh, use that to mitigate some of those. Um, those won't have a material effect until probably the winter break, um, but we do need to make some decisions and if we, if we choose to do that and we operate in that way, we'll need to have a contract with PVTA with the town by mid-October and 
so the timelines are pretty lengthy. But, but the number of cuts that were implemented were much less than what was discussed at, at the public meetings in the course of the spring, uh, because by virtue of the way the appropriations uh, played out, it was a much smaller gap that needed to be covered. So the, the, the changes to routes throughout the system were far less uh, than was originally uh, needing to be um, accommodated. So it's a, it's a, it's a much milder thing. And, but at the same time, we can have an impact on, on, on some routes that are in our town, and, and we'll have to you know, make some decisions and offer uh, advice to the, the manager as he potentially you know, moves ahead with that. So I'll, I'll collate that in a coherent way and, and share that out with you for next, next meeting. Um, and I think that's really the only thing I had to report relative to that. Um, and so if there aren't any other member reports, I don't believe we have any other business to take up tonight, do we? No. So if not, then I would take I, a motion I, to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And so we're adjourned at 9.41 p.m. Thank you all and thank you, Mr. Speed.